Good morning again, everyone. Uh, I'm Pat Sheehan, along with Hilton Catterley at the Eyewitness News Center, and uh, there are evacuations underway along the Connecticut shoreline. We can tell you right now that evacuations are taking place, and these are being urged uh, strongly by local officials in many of the areas south of Route 1 along the Connecticut shoreline, particularly eastern Connecticut, the eastern two-thirds of the state, in fact, under the gun of Hurricane Gloria as she barrels along our way. Hilton, what is the latest on the storm? I understand Dr. Neil Frank is standing by for us, too. I think maybe uh, Dr. Frank has uh, the very latest coordinates. So let's go to Dr. Neil Frank in Miami. Dr. Uh, Neil Frank, what is the latest uh, position of Hurricane Glory, and what's its status? Well, the eye of the storm is going to pass very near Atlantic City within the hour. Now, it's right now, it's just a bit offshore, but any kind of a little jog to the left could bring the center of, this, of the storm right on the coast there. It's moving 30, 35 miles an hour. It's expected to be on the south shore of Long Island by noon and then on into the south shore of, uh, of New England, up in the Hartford, Providence area by early afternoon, maybe 2 o'clock or 1.30 or something like that. So it's a fast-moving system, as many of the hurricanes are that move up in that area. It's still a very strong hurricane. It has the potential for a lot of destruction, and so we're quite concerned. To frankly, we've had some false alarms, as you know, and uh, I'm not uh, trying to ascribe any blame, but we went through sure. Hurricane Bell where everybody held their breaths sure. and then uh, it wasn't strong. Could you put this storm into perspective? Well, of course, any time a storm like this moves northward and encounters the colder water, it tries to weaken, and that's exactly what Hurricane Bell did. Now, if it moves fast enough, it doesn't have time to respond to that cold water. And it looks like this storm moving 35 miles an hour is moving fast enough that it's not going to be able to totally respond to the water, the cool water like Bell did, and it's going to be a much more serious hurricane. And this one has the potential for a lot of destruction. I guess what I'm asking, and this is not a false alarm. Well, right now it's not on a false alarm, and you're only three or four hours away, and it would be very unusual, I think, if this storm would weaken completely to the point where you wouldn't have anything except like you experienced in Bell. This is a more serious case. Now, I would say this. It looks like it's going to arrive at low tide, and that's very good news because the difference between a, a extreme disaster and a, just a major problem is the difference between high and low tide. The 38 storm, high tide, as you know, a very disastrous storm, yet 44 that was about as strong as the 38, but it arrived at low tide. Okay, Dr. Frank, thank you very much. We're beginning to lose our satellite picture with you. I guess the weather interference is starting to affect uh, some of the feeds that we're getting. Good luck to you down at the National Hurricane Center. Thank you. Hilton, uh, let's point out, too, to folks that uh, we have reached this point now, at least according to most authorities, where it's getting a little bit too late. If you have not yet done all of those things we've been talking about over the past couple of days, the Coast Guard, for example, says if you haven't tied down the boat, don't go out and try and do it now. We've really reached the point where the winds are beginning to whip on, on the Connecticut shoreline already. They really are. Let's look at our maps, because uh, Dr. Neil Frank outlined the projected path that takes it right over southern New England. and. Uh, he was a little bit iffy on the times because the storm is accelerating right now. And so if you are un anywhere close to this predicted path, uh, Pat pointed out, now is too late to, uh, to undertake any major projects. You don't want to go down to the shoreline to see how things are or to moor your boat. You've lost that opportunity, but you can do some things indoor and around the house. We want to point out to people, uh, let's face it, if you don't know it by now, the, the entire state, not officially, because the governor has not yet acted, although we are expecting a statement from him within a few moments, the entire state is really shut down in many ways. Uh, Aetna and Travelers, for example, just called, said all of their people are on their way home. People who have opened up their businesses today, many of them are shutting down. Many of them didn't open at all today. Schools all across the state are entirely shut down. We can point out to you that it is critical for you to stay inside. Don't go outside to take a look at this storm. We have to warn you right now because this is the time we can. We don't know if we're going to be losing power, losing many of you as viewers during the course of the day. When you're talking about live wires that are down, you don't know if it's a live wire, you don't know if it's a telephone okay. wire, things like this. Keep those storm precautions in mind we've been giving you for the past couple of days. They are critically important. People say, well, where is it? I'm looking outside, there's uh, some rain, there's some wind. But Hilton, I understand there's a really dramatic turn in terms of uh, the uh, front winds when they hit shore. I know that that's, that's right. already happened down along the shore. Uh, Jim McDonald is a veteran of hurricanes, not only in forecasting them, he's experienced them. And his, uh, his advice to us last night and his reminder again this morning is when these things begin to move in, uh, thing, uh, these weather conditions can change very abruptly, very radically in what is a 40 or uh, 35, 40, 50 mile an hour wind, and you say, well, I've seen this uh, a number of times, suddenly 
uh, within a matter of minutes, uh, you're, you're dealing with full hurricane force conditions, and that can arrive very suddenly. We're going to try to give you as much notice as possible, but maybe the power is going to go out. Let's yeah. use radar right now and show people where the precipitation echoes are. National Weather Service radar set on the 140-mile range, and you see a heavy shield of precipitation moving up from the southwest. Put it another way, a lot of rain echoes moving up from New York State, uh, New, uh, Long Island, and over New York City, and that is part of Hurricane Gloria, and it's moving directly toward us. So uh, we're going to have uh, flash flooding problems inland, and uh, uh, not only tidal flooding along the shoreline, but flash flood problems inland. We are expecting uh, to have uh, winds that will go even inland up to the 70 or uh, 80 mile an hour range, too. Governor O'Neill, I understand, is standing by. Uh, we'll be back in just a moment and continue with our storm coverage. Early this afternoon, there have been evacuations south of Route 1, the Boston Post Road, all along the eastern two-thirds of the state of Connecticut. Not all neighborhoods are being evacuated. People are being urged, however, to listen carefully to local announcements. Local officials are making the determinations which roads may be those that will be underwater, which homes might be those that are in danger. We said a few minutes ago, and we want to reiterate right now, it is too late for you, at least at this point, to go out and try to take on any major shopping. Many of the stores are already shut down, and people who had been advised for the past couple of days to stock up on such items as non-perishable foods and batteries and whatnot, flashlights, candles, please, this is not the time to try to run to the car and get out to the store. The storm will be arriving here shortly. The heavy winds already are battering sections of Long Island and are moving now toward the Connecticut shoreline. There will be a dramatic turn in the weather in perhaps the next 45 minutes to an hour. Hilton Catterley is with me right now, can tell us a bit about the storm track. Governor O'Neill is about to make a statement over at the emergency center and we'll be going to him live as soon as he uh, is available to us. Well, we're waiting on uh, Governor O'Neill and we'll break away as soon as uh, he's available. Uh, let's look at radar because it shows heavy showers and a pretty heavy area of rain moving into southern New England, especially southwestern Connecticut now. And as you look at this radar imagery, I'll tell you that the River Forecast Center in Bloomfield has issued a statement advising us to uh, be alert for uh, rapid changes, especially in small streams and brooks uh, that are run near our homes because we are into what might be described as a flash flood situation. As a matter of fact, flash flood watches are in effect for all of southern New England. That's because we expect uh, drenching downpours over the next several hours and the stream levels could change abruptly and very rapidly. Uh, Steve, do you have, we've got a new piece of information that is just coming into the Weather Watch. Uh, we have a tornado watch that has been issued for parts of southern New England from uh, near Bridgeport, Connecticut, down to Hyannis, Massachusetts. Oh, we, will plot right that. Yeah. we will plot that on our maps in a minute, but it, basically it includes uh, most of Connecticut, all, virtually all of Connecticut, virtually all of Rhode Island, and much of uh, central and eastern Massachusetts. The reason a tornado watch has been issued uh, is because when a hurricane moves inland to the right of the hurricane path, frequently, not all the time, but frequently, tornadoes uh, do develop. And uh, so uh, we're telling you now that in addition to a hurricane warning, an imminent approach of a hurricane moving into southern New England, we also have a, a tornado watch in effect. Yeah. And, All the way uh, up into Boston as well. Right. Jim McDonald has plotted this for us, and uh, I'll just verbali verbally describe it for you. It, it covers all of Connecticut, all of Rhode Island, and all of Massachusetts except for the Berkshires. So uh, let's tornado point watch out, is Let's point effect. out that the path of this storm, as we are seeing it now, and as Dr. Neil Frank told us live just a few minutes ago, is to, at least as best we know right now, go up the eastern portion of Connecticut. The eye would go in on that side. Now, we've been told by you over the past several days, Hilton, that the most damaging winds are to the east or to the right of that storm track. Is that correct? They are. Now, then, one thing to point out right now, the storm has been fairly close to land over the past uh, few hours, overnight, and during the early morning hours, and the eye is becoming a little bit indistinct, so this may become pretty academic. By the time it gets here, we could just have a very powerful windstorm. That's our latest color satellite photo that we have. But uh, so it may be a little bit uh, difficult to say the eye is within two or three miles of Islip, Long Island, or Bridgeport, Connecticut, or New Haven later in the day when it gets up here. Why so is that? Why, would the, why does the eye tend to collapse then? Well, when it's, it it's close land? enough to land that uh, there's a lot of friction. As a matter of fact, it's just east of, uh, uh, of uh, 
Atlantic City, uh, New Jersey right now, just a few miles offshore uh, from Atlantic City, New Jersey, and moving northward about 35 miles an hour now. The storm is still powerful. I'm not indicating that it's falling apart. It's simply becoming a little more difficult to fix a central location. So I think we better be pretty general and just say uh, eastern uh, uh, two-thirds of Connecticut right now stands at risk of uh, having a major hurricane and this yet, afternoon. And yet those heavy rains that we're already seeing on the radar are actually coming to the western side of what that projected storm track might be. Well, they're, they're, they envelop both sides of, of uh, actually they envelop both sides of the uh, hurricane. We've had, we have a new view of our radar and apparently they have elevated the antenna just to show the heaviest uh -huh. bands yes. and we've eliminated all the real light precipitation and you can see the, cla uh, the uh, banded uh, uh, effect of uh, squalls now beginning to blow in off the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, let me reiterate because I know people come in and out of television programs we are under a hurricane warning. That's the basic situation. We expect hurricane conditions to arrive in southern New England uh, from midday into early afternoon. By that, we mean strong winds, uh, abnormally high tides, uh, torrential rains. And we also have a tornado watch in the area, and we'll go into that in more detail in a okay. minute. Okay. Marla Romash is standing by right now at the state's emergency center at the state armory. Governor O'Neill is expected to come in soon and Pat, to make a I'm statement. I'm going to interrupt you for a minute, Pat, because the governor has just walked into the briefing room and is about to make that statement. an update the information as we have which is as readily available to you as it is to us uh, i've signed the civil preparedness emergency uh, document which has been filed with the secretary of state which allows me to to continue doing what we have been doing to begin with and the latest information that we have it was centered about 80 miles south of atlantic city moving northward at 30 miles an hour and expe expected to uh, speed up and it certainly has the potential of producing the damaging winds and high storm surge. Uh, the state police report no emergencies that they know of across the state as far as their operation is concerned. The Department of Transportation report that Groton Airport is closed because of its location on the low-lying area. Bradley is open still. Uh, the last flight is expected out before noon. The New Haven line has one train going in each uh, direction per hour and will stop at each section in each station across the line. And as of 9.30, commuter buses will continue to run across the state of Connecticut until people are home if need be. Now, we do have some power outages that have been given to us from Northeast Utilities. And across the state of Connecticut, the latest power outages have been a total of 19,535 locations. In Eastern Connecticut, 2,971. In Northern Connecticut, 279. In Southern Connecticut, 12,480 and in Western Connecticut, uh, 3,786. We also have report that the uh, Millstone 1, 2, and Connecticut Yankee are closing down. However, they've also assured me, the uh, power company, Northeast Utility, that as far as the, the uh, amount of power needed will be here from their normal generating stations. Now, that is the report as far as I can give you today. Uh, Roberta Bom uh, Blomberg of Northeast Utility is a spokesperson for Northeast, and she is here if need be. Once again, Governor, no state of emergency yet? <clears throat> it's as much as a state of emergency as we're going to have. We're not going to close the roads until absolutely uh, necessary because we want people to be able to get home. Certainly if you're home, stay there. Certainly if you're at work, uh, if the storm hits, and when it hits, stay where you are. Uh, don't travel unless absolutely necessary. That's the position as of this well, moment. Governor, what is it that you signed? You just said there isn't really a state of emergency. You said at the top of your statement that you signed a civil preparedness emergency document. Which is pro forma. And that, what does that mean? That allows me to do everything that we have been doing with or without that particular document. However, it is on file. So if I do have to close the roads, then there are no repercussions at a later date from a legal standpoint. But, Governor, what's happening with the airports and the trains? The trains are, we're running a train per hour along the shoreline. Uh, the airport in Groton will, is closed. Uh, Bradley Field is open and will continue to stay open uh, until uh, speeds reach uh, high force there, which is not expected much before noontime. Governor, have you gotten any requests from aid from anyone around the state yet? We have not received any direct requests for aid. I'd like to show you some of the towns that are evacuating at the present time. You can, uh, this was just handed to me before I came in. The areas in yellow, which are the shoreline towns, some evacuation has taken place across the shoreline towns in Fairfield County, Branford, Westbrook, Old Saybrook, Old Lamb, across eastern Connecticut as well. 
That is the information that we have as of this moment. Governor, what, uh, what have you heard from town officials about the degree of cooperation from people who have been asked to work We haven't heard anything one way or the other. We haven't heard any complaints from uh, any residents that have been asked to leave, and we haven't heard uh, any requests from any selectmen or mayors across the state needing state assistance for emergency evacuations as of this point. So I, as of this moment, uh, we have no uh, no knowledge of any problems. Are these voluntary evacuations? They are. Governor, They're did voluntary. You, did you go to the bank's closing because the police were elsewhere and it might, it might be a robbery? Well, that was a thought, but uh, I think we should uh, close the banks because we really don't want people out and about if they don't have to be out and about. And that uh, was the decision to do so. What about uh, other private businesses? Where, what's your position right now? The position is, has not changed. That's certainly up to the discretion of the business person themselves. Many, many plants are, are closing uh, themselves. Many, many stores and so forth are closing. And that's the proper procedure to take. Uh, we are going to get a, a good whack from a good-sized storm. How bad it is going to be, still no one knows. Hopefully it won't be as bad as originally anticipated, but no one knows that. Mr. Governor, in the are communities that are being evacuated, have there any, been any medical problems reported or any injuries in connection with either the downed power lines or the evacuation? Not to us at this position. What about hospitals in those areas, like in New London and, and Groton? Are those being cleared out, or are those still operating? We have heard no uh, problem from those areas whatsoever as far as any evacuation of any hospitals. Uh, we do have some information, some convalescent homes, which we have not substantiated as yet. Or some are being evacuated along the shorelines, but we don't know if that's for sure as of this moment. Governor, are there any roads that are threat that might uh, be reasonably expected to close? Well, probably some shoreline town roads, I would think, but that again depends on the circumstances. How high the surge is, how much rainfall we get, uh, these things are at this time indeterminable. What information do you have as to what the critical time period is for the state? They still think somewhere about one o'clock ish. Uh, that should be reaching the, the, lat the latest report I have, and there's a gentleman here from FEMA. Bob, are you here? Yes, I'm back here, Governor. Do you have any other update on that? No, we don't. I was trying to get some updated information. I don't have So it's still approximately 1 p.m., to the best of our knowledge. Or, or the center of the storm? Well, uh, the, the height, basically, or when it's arriving and would, when we'd be really in it. And I've just seen that there may not be an eye by the time it gets here. So hopefully it, it will dissipate. Of course, uh, no one can predict that. Governor, is the uh, National Guard being used right now? National Guard is in standby position in the various armories that uh, along the shoreline particularly. Uh, their vehicles are ready to go. If need be, they will go. Governor O'Neill with a complete update there coming in at the state's emergency control center, the storm control center at the state armory in Hartford. And the governor, as you may have just, uh, just heard, if you've just joined us, the governor talking about the arrival of the storm. He is not ordering the shutdown of the roads. He has, however, signed documents giving him complete emergency powers. And Hilton, uh, that is a precaution on behalf of the state of Connecticut. So as the governor said, everything he's been doing is now legal. But he wants to make certain that he does have all of the flexibility necessary. Rail traffic does continue, though limited. Commuter buses will continue. The idea is to get everybody back to their homes as safely, safely as possible. I want to raise, once again, the, the question did not come up again today, the question of mobile home safety. There are a lot of mobile home parks around, mm -hmm. and we have heard, Hilton, throughout uh, the past several days that these are dangerous places they for are. some people to be. They should seek uh, more substantial surroundings, if possible. They should do that, and they should do that now. Mobile homes simply are not safe to be in in a strong windstorm, and this uh, is going to be a strong windstorm. As a matter of fact, the latest information we have is that uh, hurricane force winds should begin along southeast coastal sections of Connecticut uh, late this morning, by late morning, and they should spread inland by early afternoon. So if you live in a mobile home along uh, Connecticut's coastline, now is the time within the next uh, few minutes, next 15 or 20 minutes, you should uh, make a determination to leave, go to a place of safety, a substantial building, and, uh, and ride the storm out there. You just don't have any more time to sit around and debate. I want to show you, we mentioned a minute ago, we have a tornado watch in the area. I don't want to overemphasize it, but I just want to show you where it is. It includes all of Connecticut, uh, most of Massachusetts, all of Rhode Island, and uh, virtually all of Long Island. And again, a tornado watch simply means that conditions between now and 6 o'clock tonight are favorable for the uh, possible formation of tornadoes. It doesn't mean we have one uh, on, uh, on target now and moving in. We just have the this, conditions. This is the time to warn you. This is the time for action. Conditions will dramatically deteriorate over the next couple of hours. The center of the storm, the front of the storm, should arrive across Long Island around 12 o'clock in the state of Connecticut about 1 o'clock. And uh, out ahead of it again, the National Weather Service saying hurricane conditions uh, are expected along parts of Connecticut's coastline, 
before the noon hour. We will be back with you and continue our coverage here from Eyewitness News as events warrant. For now, though, for Hilton Catterley, I'm... Power of a hurricane, the strongest one we've seen in more than 50 years, apparently, here in this part of the country, is now moving uh, toward the Connecticut shoreline. We are, as they say at the National Hurricane Center, looking down the barrel of a gun. Let's take a look at what the storm looks like. The leading edge of this storm is moving now toward the Connecticut shoreline. We have a live-eye picture right now at Hammonasset State Park at the beach in Madison along the Connecticut shoreline. The winds are whipping up the tides. The storm surge itself, as this storm moves toward us in the next couple of hours, is expected to lift the tide some 8 to 10 feet above normal. We have been very fortunate on this historic day and that the storm will apparently arrive in southern New England at a point when the tides are receding, when we are heading toward a low tide. Thank goodness for that, because if we were at a high tide, we would be having 8 to 10 foot uh, waves above, or I should say seas above, the normal high tide mark, and that, of course, could wash away entire neighborhoods along the Connecticut shoreline. Evacuations have been taking place all the way through Fairfield County, up through New Haven County, out through Branford and Guilford, out toward Clinton. We understand that all of eastern Connecticut's shoreline, we have had some reports of evacuations. The evacuations will continue through the late morning hours, and, of course, we are expecting at this point the storm itself, the center of the storm, to arrive on the southern New England shoreline sometime early this afternoon. Hilton Catterley has been monitoring all of the latest developments, and he joins us now with the latest on the location of Storm Gloria as she moves towards southern New England. Hilton? Well, those pictures tell a vivid story, Pat. We want to look at radar, first of all. The National Weather Service radar uh, set on the 140-mile range, and you can begin to see the shape of Hurricane Gloria, uh, an area of general rainfall over southern New England, and then you begin to see the bands uh, winding into the storm, and down here appears to be either one of the bands associated with Gloria itself or perhaps uh, part of the eye wall right down here at the bottom of the picture. Uh, and that uh, whole uh, system is moving northeastward very rapidly. How rapidly? Let's look at our maps and I'll show you. Beginning with uh, 6 o'clock this morning, here's where we had Gloria positioned at 6. Now watch the movement between 6 and 9. See how it surged up the coastline between 6 and 9 o'clock? It is now moving at about 35 miles an hour. It is accelerating. It's expected to move more rapidly uh, in the next few hours than it's moving now. The latest information from the National Hurricane Center, this 2 p.m. time is wrong. It will now arrive at the uh, south uh, Long Island shoreline approximately noon as it makes its accelerated course forward uh, toward Long Island and then toward Connecticut. Uh, uh, shortly after that time. It is 145 miles right now southwest of Southampton, Long Island. That's the current location of Hurricane Gloria. Top winds right now are uh, clocked by uh, Hurricane Hunter planes in the storm at 120 miles an hour. And as I say, it is moving rapidly now towards southern New England with uh, virtually no chance of it veering away. Location at 9 o'clock just off the South Jersey shore. Uh, right now, 145 miles southwest of Southampton, Long Island, and again, moving rapidly toward, uh, toward Long Island. Winds, well, most recent wind reports we have show winds near gale force along the uh, southern New England shoreline. Heaviest winds we've seen in the New York City area have gusted at 51 miles an hour. Do we have stronger wind gusts in that, Jim? Now then, the winds in the New York City area reportedly blowing at about 54 miles an hour. Well, that's the picture of the storm. Again, a tornado watch in effect for our entire area until the storm passes by and flash flood watches in effect, as well as a hurricane warning. Pat? Hilton, we of course remind people that this is no time to go out and try to uh, do anything that you hadn't done in the past 24, 48 hours with the warnings. We have had the blessing of the scientific technology of our times. You think back uh, 20, 25 years to some of the earlier storms that we had back into the mid-50s, perhaps 30 years ago, we didn't have the satellite technology. We could not see these storms coming. We had to rely on ships at sea to be radioing in the information about these massive storms as they headed toward us. We have, as I say, had the blessing of that technology, though, this time, and we have been watching this storm for the past several days move toward us. Many people have taken advantage of those advance warnings, and we have closings for you. We can tell you just universally, all of the schools are closed. All of the banks in the state of Connecticut have been closed down. State employees who are considered to be non-essential, meaning non-emergency employees, are not working. The insurance companies are all closed down. Your business is shut down today. Call your airline for further information if you are planning on traveling. Bradley International remains open. A few flights are going in and out. 
that most likely will change. Some of the smaller airports along the shoreline already have shut down. No further flights are going out, of course, because of this monstrous storm. As I say, we indeed are in an historic day here in the state of Connecticut. Back in 1938, uh, the legends were born with the hurricane of 38, the great storm. Gloria is said to be a stronger hurricane, and it is bearing down on us at this hour. Channel 3's Marla Romash has been monitoring developments at the Storm Center, the emergency headquarters over at the State Armory building this morning. Marla, what can you tell us? Pat, the governor has been briefing reporters periodically. His last briefing came about a half an hour ago. He spoke a great deal about the transportation things that you were just talking about. He has not declared a full state of emergency. He simply signed the emergency orders that will allow him to take whatever steps are necessary as the weather gets worse. The roads are still open. State police tell the governor there are no emergencies. Trains you didn't mention. The New Haven line is running one train an hour going in each direction. And as of 9.30, commuter buses were still running. They'll stay on the road until everyone's home. The governor reports more than 19,000 power outages, mostly in eastern and southern Connecticut. Northeast Utilities officials here say they'll work to clean up those power outages until the weather gets so bad that the crews can't get through. Millstone 1 and 2 and Connecticut Yankee, which are Connecticut's nuclear power plants, have been shut down. Again, the governor said, even though they're down, we should have enough energy to keep us through the storm. Northeast utilities say it's a precautionary measure. And again, the governor briefed us on evacuations that you mentioned earlier, Pat. We expect to hear from him throughout the day as he meets with agency heads, department heads, and gets more information and a better feel for what's going on in the towns. Pat? Marla, so what we're talking about, though, in, in fact, when the governor says he's not shutting down the state of Connecticut, he's acknowledging that all of the essential uh, services will, retain, will, will remain in place right now. People do have a way to get to their homes. He's not going to try to barricade the roads in any sense. Absolutely. That's one of the reasons why he said he was keeping the roads open, because he felt it was important that people trying to get home were able to do that. That's why the commuter buses are still running, and that's right. That's why the roads are still open. Okay, Marla, we'll be back with you as uh, events warrant. Thanks very much. Marla Romash reporting live from the uh, Storm Emergency Center over at the State Armory building. New, uh, new figures, uh, slightly new figures, and what we have right now into the Weather Watch. Let's take a look at the National Weather Service radar again, because that paints a pretty graphic picture of where the precipitation echoes are. And you see that little band of precipitation just south of New York City. Those are part of the rain squalls moving in with Gloria. New York City's reported wind gusts to 54 miles an hour. So gale force conditions expected uh, over uh, all of Long Island uh, effective right now. And uh, it's just too uh, late to get out and do any errands or anything. Uh, stay put, stay where you are, stay in a secure shelter. And as far as a timetable, full hurricane force winds, peak storm conditions between now and noon on the south shore of Long Island and uh, moving uh, across Long Island Sound and early afternoon in the uh, eastern two-thirds the eastern two-thirds of Connecticut. New London County will be especially hard hit. It looks like it'll bear the brunt of this storm. We have two important tips just to pass along to you at this point. The telephone company asks, please don't call up. This is a time when you'd like to have a friend to sit and chat with. Don't call and chat with your neighbors right now. The phone system is being overloaded, and the phone lines, those that stay up, obviously we're hoping they all do, but those lines that stay up will be needed for emergencies. So please don't call up Aunt Sally right now just to sit and say hi and find out how she's doing. Secondly, the question of downed lines. We will indeed have a lot of downed lines down in New York. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about that. They have so many underground systems. Our power lines are out. They are exposed. Northeast Utilities already has crews on standby. They are ready to move out and try to, and try to build up uh, the system once again as soon as they can, as soon, as soon as the storm passes. But we're told it could take three days for all of these services to be restored. This storm update from Eyewitness News was for you again. Hilton Cat will be reporting live again from Weather Watch 3 with the latest on Hurricane Gloria. One way to describe the storm is by watching our radar images, and we'll show you what that is in a minute. Another way to describe Gloria is simply to look at it. Look out your window. We'll take you to the shoreline vicariously in these scenes along Hammonasset uh, Beach just a few minutes ago. Uh, this was ha the Hammonasset area of Madison where folks have boarded up their homes in preparation uh, for Gloria. This was at a calmer time of the day, earlier in the day, when winds were gusty, it was blustery, but it was not stormy. It is now stormy on Long Island Sound. Gale force winds whipping across the sound, gusts over 40 miles an hour being reported uh, all along, not only Long Island Sound, but across Long Island and uh, into the New York City area, where gales have not only been recorded, but uh, also uh, storm winds, winds above 54 miles an hour now, 
uh, reportedly battering the New York City area, at least in gusts. And the gale force winds have worked their way inland. To describe the motion of this storm, here it is right now. Let's backtrack just a minute. At 11 o'clock last night, Hurricane Gloria was approaching Cape Hatteras, North Carolina. By 9 o'clock this morning, it had moved this far, and that's why we say it's accelerating. It's moving rapidly toward the northeast. We'll animate these cloud pictures, and you can track the uh, storm for yourself. Watch it roll up the east coast, bearing, uh, drawing a bead on southern New England, and it looks as if uh, hurricane conditions will begin to affect uh, southern New England within the next hour or so. Uh, at 9 o'clock here was Gloria. We expect by noon that the uh, hurricane conditions will be occurring along south uh, Long Island shoreline, and shortly thereafter, a hurricane passing between New Haven and Providence, Rhode Island, uh, around midday or shortly thereafter in Connecticut. We'll be back with another eyewitness update as uh, conditions warrant, and of course... New Connecticut company. has been shut down. Evacuations are taking place along the Connecticut shoreline. Our hurricane uh, warnings remain in effect. We are expecting the force of this storm to me be moving through southern New England between now and 4 or 5 o'clock this afternoon. This is what the storm looked like as it came ashore at Hammonasset State Park in Madison a short time ago. The fury of the storm is now kicking up winds. We have uh, rated some of the winds already here in the city of Hartford at better than 60 miles an hour in gusts. We've had sustained winds of 40 to 50 miles an hour within the past few minutes. And uh, getting a bird's eye view of that right now, my colleague Jeffrey Cole, who is standing by live right now on the rooftop above us in the city of Hartford. And Jeff, what can you tell us about the way it feels up there right now? Well, Pat, certainly those 40 to 50 mile an hour winds, uh, we can feel them now, feel them at my back. And Pat, as you look over Connecticut now, looking over at 91 in the Connecticut River, we can officially say that Hurricane Gloria, which we've talked about for a number of days now, is upon us. Gale force winds, hard driving rain, rain that is already uh, flooded streets partially as we drove around the street today. As Hilton Cattley has told us, 40 to 50 mile an hour winds. As he said, uh, uh, we will feel these winds from right now on to the middle of the afternoon, maybe later into the afternoon as well. As you can feel, the, the wind is quite strong here. On the shoreline, the most dangerous time to be there is right now as Hurricane Gloria comes upon us. Some advice for those of you who are at home right now, stay away from your windows. This wind could easily blow in a, a window pane uh, quite, quite easily. So stay away from those windows and tape those windows if you already haven't and you want to stay at home and maybe stay uh, in the lower floors of, of your home if you can. Once again, Hurricane Gloria is upon us. We can certainly feel it up here. We will be here throughout the afternoon following it. Pat, back to you. Okay, Jeffrey, thank you very much. We do want to remind people that uh, there are emergency shelters that are available to you in every community within our coverage area. The police in the city of Hartford told us just a few minutes ago that if you lose your power, if you have a problem in the city of Hartford, they're suggesting you go to your doorway. They have cruisers that will be actually monitoring every street, they say, and watching for people in distress. But again, don't go wandering out into the middle of the streets at this point because it can be extremely dangerous outside. This is a most powerful, most dangerous storm and we are expecting it to be with us for the next several hours. We've had tens of thousands of power outages already reported around the state of Connecticut. Hilton Catterley has been following the wind damage as it comes up the shoreline and into the state of Connecticut, and I know that you've been in contact with many of your weather watchers, one right now. Pat, we have one of the weather watchers on the phone right now from West Haven, Dave Spillane in West Haven. Dave, you still there with me? Uh, yes, I am, Hilton. All right, tell me from your vantage point what's happened during the last half hour. In the last half hour, uh, the intensity of the storm has uh, increased dramatically. We've had gusts of wind up to hurricane force, and the barometer reading is uh, the bottom is just dropping out. It's down to 29.10, and it's going down very fast. Now, you, uh, you, know, you and I have talked about your equipment a little bit. Uh, uh -huh. uh, let me ask you, how do you know the winds have gusted at hurricane force? I was watching it. <laughs> You've got an anemometer. Yes, I do. Yeah. Now, uh, as far as your barometer is concerned, uh, put that into perspective for us. Have you ever seen it go down that low? Uh, I've seen it down lower, but I've never seen it go down as fast as it's been going down. I uh, mean, you can almost you can almost visually see it going down. That's how it's been going down, uh, especially you, in the last two to three hours. Paint is kind of a little picture uh, here. Uh, where are you specifically in West Haven? Uh, about a mile from uh, the shoreline. Okay, and uh, what does it look like out the window? Uh, what does it sound like to you? Uh, there's a couple of trees are down, there's branches in the road, and uh, a pretty steady rain. It's not really a torrential rain right now, but uh, we've had you know, a few uh, real downbursts. But uh, so far, it seems like the rain isn't the factor here. It's uh, apparently the wind. Okay, now how quickly did the weather change on you uh, this morning? 
Uh, it came up rather, you know, rather quickly. And very quickly, very suddenly. High tides this morning ran from about 8.30 in the eastern sections of Long Island Sound all the way up to high tide just about now in the extreme uh, southwestern portion of Connecticut. So when these strong winds are coming in at high tide at Fairfield County, and that's where uh, some of the uh, tidal flooding may be occurring at the present time. Again, as Pat mentioned, we've had uh, reports of winds near or at hurricane force in Connecticut, and uh, Hurricane Gloria is indeed right now at our doorstep. Pat? Milton, when you mentioned the storm surge, let me ask you about the, uh, the, the question, I suppose, is, is how far inland must somebody be from the shoreline? We had stories about the evacuations. All of the evacuations, are, or most of them, are taking place just south of Route 1, the Boston Post mm -hmm. Road. What is the situation with a storm surge or with the high tide coming, or the, the high waves coming in? How far back from the actual beach must people be to feel safe? In Connecticut, uh, this is not an area that is anywhere near like the wide expanses around Miami or the Cape Hatteras area. In Connecticut, our terrain slopes uphill pretty quickly, so all you have to do is uh, get three or four hundred yards back from the shoreline, and you should be safe from any storm surge that would uh, come into Long Island Sound. Uh, we keep seeing our lights flicker, so I'll repeat that in case your TV has failed and then come back on. Uh, any storm surge that would come into Long Island Sound uh, probably would not work more than 100 yards or so inland. This is not a flat, wide area, open area like uh, areas to our south, uh, Cape Hatteras and so forth. So your best bet is to uh, be three to 400 yards away from uh, Long Island Sound, and you should be all right as far as the storm surge is concerned. Now, a storm surge is built up under this dome of low pressure that comes uh, swirling up the coast with the hurricane. And it's simply a pile of water that is moved north with the hurricane, and it has waves on top of that. And so that's why it moves in suddenly, and it's uh, probably the most dangerous part of a hurricane. The center of the storm actually sucking up the, uh, the, with incredible intensity the water out of the ocean. Hilton, thank you very much. Uh, we want to point out, we're talking about the electricity and the possibility that some of you may be losing power. We do know that tens of thousands of people have already lost their power around the state. Uh, stay in touch, if you can, with uh, news organizations. Very important information will be coming out as the day progresses. But for right now, what we want to do is turn to Three on Your Side reporter Mary Ali Newman, who's going to join us, to talk about something you may think is a little bit premature, but we may lose you as the day goes on, and that is how to handle ourselves, Mary Ali, after the storm has moved through, which we're expecting uh, later on this evening. And I suppose tomorrow is supposed to be a bright, sunny day with nice temperatures, but a lot of us won't have power, won't have uh, perhaps uh, food that we can get out of the refrigerator. Tell us. Well, the important thing is to keep our heads after the storm. We're being cautious now, but think about after. Safety must always be on all of our minds. Power lines could be down, lots of them. Absolutely do not touch. Assume it's a live wire and don't go near it. Now, if you don't see utility crews out repairing the lines, and if you can use a phone, call your local power company. The customer service number is in the phone book and report the down line. All of your electrical appliances should be unplugged. Leave them that way, because if they're plugged in and your whole neighborhood does the same thing, when the electricity comes back on, there could be a very low voltage, and that could damage your appliances. When the electricity is back on, begin to plug things back in a little at a time. Now, keep your refrigerator and freezer closed. You want to keep those things for cold as long as you can. If electricity is off too long and meat starts thawing in the freezer, you may want to throw it out. Uh, thawed vegetables can be cooked and eaten, though. Just use your common sense. And it's best to depend on that canned food. Use them. You should have an ample supply if you've been doing all the things we're telling you to do in this pre-storm activity. And if you have a gas water heater and your basement floods, where that heater is located, or even in the garage, the water will extinguish the pilot light. Now, there are safety devices built in in those appliances, so don't worry. If you have a gas range, you're set to cook, but if it's a range with an electric igniter, you will have to light the burners with a match, and you will not be able to use the oven. Water? Well, it should be boiled if it's been drawn for an extended amount of time. Now, you're going to have to be creative here. Maybe you need to use the camper stove, your fireplace, or maybe you can even figure out something with your gas grill. Now, if you're obviously using that camper stove inside, open the window. After the storm, remember your neighbors, especially the elderly and those who may be sick. Check on them. Form a buddy system with your neighbors. If you need to go out for an emergency or some other problem, then go in one car. Just be considerate about everybody else because we don't know what the situation's going to be out there. Oh, well, we know what it is right now, and that's pretty, uh, pretty difficult. Let's also point out, uh, do not use charcoal 
inside your house no, uh, under never. any circumstances. No. We've, uh, we've gotten the noon bulletin in on Hurricane Glory, and looking over it, we were talking about the storm arriving. Winds in excess of 100 miles an hour are now occurring over Long Island. So that's the latest. Okay. Thank you, Milton. Mm -hmm. We do want to point out, too, while we're talking about what is going to be happening, that uh, the power company and the phone company, they're saying that it may take three to four days to restore all the service that we're going to be losing, that we already are losing, and that we're going to be losing in the next several hours. So please be patient, and as Mary Ali said, help your neighbor. Very important. Shelters are available in your neighborhood. They are available in your community. And in just a couple of minutes, as we continue with our broadcasting, we will be bringing you more specific information about that. Let's take a break right now. We'll be back. Gail King will be joining me in just a moment. The hurricane of 1985. Her name is Gloria. She has arrived on shore in southern New England. Wind gusts now, as Hilton Catterley told us just a few minutes ago, of better than 100 miles an hour on Long Island. And we have had gusts here in Hartford of 69 miles an hour within the last few minutes. Charlie Bagley has been tracking this storm all evening and all through the morning. He's standing by now over at Weather Watch 3 to bring us the very latest. Charlie? Okay, Gil. Uh, during the morning hours, the uh, forward speed did accelerate going to about 35 miles an hour. Uh, here's the track from 6 o'clock this morning, how it's been coming up. I'm projecting it's going to be uh, the eye of the storm will be moving to Connecticut before 2 o'clock this afternoon. And uh, between now and then, the conditions are going to deteriorate rapidly. We can expect that we're going to be getting some strong gusty winds, hurricane force winds along the shoreline, particularly east of the river. I anticipate that there'll be uh, extensive uh, corrosion of the, uh, the uh, sand there. The uh, high waves coming in, the waves are running about 10 feet high right now. The high tides are going to be 8 to 10 feet, possibly even higher, on the eastern part of uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island. So hurricane winds, torrential rain, and flooding, and there'll be inland flooding in all of the local, uh, the low-lying areas. I'll be back with a complete forecast later Charlie, in the program. Yes, Hilton? Charlie, hang on just a second. Yep. There's, a, there's the noon report from Bridgeport. Okay. I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> They've got 81-mile-an-hour wind gusts. Okay, great. So they're in Bridgeport. Okay. Sustained wind of 63. Okay, as Pat had mentioned, there have been, thank you, Hilton, there have been gusts out in Long Island over 100 miles an hour, and uh, that's what's heading our way. The eye of the storm itself is just about ice lip Long Island right now. And again, I'll be back later with the complete forecast. Okay, Charlie, I have a feeling we will be uh, seeing you an awful lot during the coming half hour because all of our news today involves the weather, and indeed that is the number one topic on everybody's mind. We have uh, been bracing for this storm. We've had the scientific miracles, if you will, of the last... 20 or 30 years that have enabled us now to be able to see these storms coming at us. And indeed, it has been a frightening thing to watch on a storm track. We kept hoping that we were, in fact, perhaps uh, over-cautioning people, but now we know that the uh, thrust of the storm, the brunt of the storm itself, is coming directly at us and, in fact, is arriving on the southern Connecticut shoreline now. And as you might expect, we are expecting a whole lot of rain. We have heard reports of up to 5 to 7 inches. Jeff Cole has spent his morning at the River Forecast Center. He can bring us more on that end of the story. Jeffrey, what can you tell well, us? Pat and Gail, I am learning about hurricanes every minute that I stand up here. The wind is sporadic, and it blows you hard, and then it'll stop. The rain is pelting, though. It almost hurts when you hit your skin. Now, earlier this morning, we went over to the River Forecast Center. They're the people who decide, uh, who judge whether or not uh, this rain that we're going to get is going to bother the uh, rivers in the area and cause some flooding. Let's take a look at that videotape uh, as we do that now. Now, they say that the Connecticut River and the major rivers in the area will not flood. They believe it'll be the streams and the, and the smaller bodies of water that will indeed go over their banks and cause some problems for people uh, living along those banks. Their advice is to watch that water. If you see it coming up, uh, go right ahead and, uh, and get out of the way as soon as you can. Of, uh, precipitation with uh, rainfall higher in uh, local areas, maybe even up to 10 inches. Uh, with the four to six inches of uh, precipitation, we would expect uh, flash flooding. This is what it looks like this morning, people, before the rain came. In fact, people uh, lining up at gas stations, taping windows, making those last minute preparations for the advance of Gloria. And once again, Gloria is upon us with heavy winds, winds that we can certainly feel here. And it's almost uh, unbelievable to think that the winds could even become stronger than, than what they are now. And as I told you before, the wind seems to stop. Right now, it's, it's uh, almost clear without any rain. And then it'll come back hard, and the winds will come back hard. So it's quite an experience and quite a thing to watch out here. Pat and Gail, back to you. Okay, let's point out, thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, let's point out to folks, too, that uh, 
that in a state of emergency is in effect. I mean, it, it seems almost uh, as if uh, it's superfluous to mention, but a state of emergency is in effect. The roads have not been shut down in the state of Connecticut. They have not been shut down in the state of Massachusetts. But the governors in both states have taken on their civil defense emergency powers right now in order to make those kinds of declarations and make the declarations that are necessary for the evacuations. And there are, being, uh, there are some forced evacuations taking place as well as the voluntary ones. But those evacuations, of course, uh, need to be administered by the local civil defense personnel, emergency personnel, and they are coordinating that. We've had uh, evacuations all along the Connecticut shoreline. We are anticipating within the next several minutes Governor O'Neill to arrive at the emergency uh, storm center at the state armory, and Marla Romash is standing by there for live eye coverage of that when the governor does come in. So we'll be going to that in just a couple of moments when the governor issues his 12 o'clock update, which we have been anticipating. The governor, Pat, saying he did not want to close down the roads because he wanted to give people a chance to get home if they wanted to go home. Once he got to work, many people found that they were given the day off anyway. So the governor decided he did not want to close down the roads because he wanted, you to, wanted to give you a chance to get back home. That's where we you belong, right? Word. That's right. We're receiving word that the governor is about to walk in the room to there make There he an is, and he's making his there statement. Let's is. go live. Our coastline now is being battered pretty heavily with some advanced rains, winds, and tides. Okay, Al, Even though speaking. the tide is on its way out, there's still heavy uh, flooding along the shoreline. State police departments have uh, been checking in with all their barracks, and there's our trees and wires down across the state. Some roads are closed. Uh, Department of Transportation, they've got still running trains out of New York, and commuter bus services will stop at 12.30 today, another half an hour. Bradley is open, but many, many flights have been canceled. Uh, DEP, excuse me, is uh, keeping its eye on a number of dams across the state, which uh, will be available if, for those that need them. Uh, the military department, there are 650 men on duty at this time, men and women. 900 on standby as all their equipment is ready to roll as soon as necessary. The health department, three nursing homes, uh, and one detox center have been evacuated, and uh, one other one is being evacuated now in Guilford. The Red Cross has 46 shelters across the state in operation and 36 various communities. The electrical customers across the state, there is now an outage of 132,190 approximately 116,000 uh, in North uh, East Utilities and 15,000 with UI. SNEPCO is asking people not to use the telephone unless it is an emergency. We now know that almost all the students are home from school. I'm asking them, as the governor of this state, to please stay off those phones unless they're calling in an emergency and others to do exactly the same. Uh, we've also been informed uh, by the state police department to make sure if you're taking a uh, anything in your home to keep it, uh, any propane and so forth, do not take that into your home. Tie it down securely on the outside. Do not take a chance of having a fire and explosion in your home. I've talked to the towns of Stamford, Bridgeport, Milford, New Haven, Old Saybrook, New London, and Stonington, and talked either myself personally or some of the staff people with their people uh, in those various locations. I also have Lieutenant Commander O'Neill here with me from the Coast Guard who had a report to earlier, Lieutenant Commander of a, of a boat in Long Island Sound, and we don't know whether that was a hoax or not. But if anybody is out there playing hoaxes, this is no time to do it, whether you're an adult or a juvenile, whatever you are. This is a very, very serious matter. Lieutenant Commander, do you want to make a report on that? Uh, yes, Governor. Uh, the Coast Guard in uh, New Haven earlier this morning uh, picked up a May Day uh, from a vessel uh, which gave its position as approximately uh, 200 yards off of uh, buoy 32 Alpha, which would make that vessel somewhere south of uh, Stamford, a few miles south of, uh, south of Stamford. Uh, they indicated that the engines were disabled. Uh, communications uh, were very difficult with the Coast Guard station. However, uh, they indicated that there were 22 uh, POBs, which is 22 people on board. Uh, a radio operator in Greenwich uh, listening uh, indicated that he thought he heard teenagers laughing. Uh, Governor, as you're a Coast Guard aide de camp, uh, I'm informing you that uh, the Coast Guard is uh, ready, willing, and able to respond to any uh, search and rescue. Uh, but we ask all of the citizens of Connecticut, uh, this is not the time for any tomfoolery, uh, because the Coast Guard in New Haven will respond uh, to this emergency. The conditions are so severe that the Coast Guard in New Haven has had to move its uh, boats to shelter and to think that some of our people would indeed have to go out uh, and try and attempt 
a rescue which could be a hoax, then all I can say is it would be very difficult. Thank you, Lieutenant Thank you. Members of the press, if you have any questions specifically, please proceed. We have some staff people here. You want, might want to direct them directly to them. However, proceed through me, please. Once again, Governor, have you received aid from anyone around the state or re received a request for aid? I just got a call prior to coming out here that the town of Milford, uh, the, the first, the, excuse me, the mayor of the town of Milford uh, was trying to get through. The lines were blocked at that time. And when I finish with this uh, report to you, this update to all the people I'm going to call uh, for Jagos from Milford. What about airport, the airport, Brown right Airport? What does it look like? Uh, I haven't heard anything from the airport other than it was still open. I would assume that right. as soon as the winds pick up, it will close. There's very few flights going out of there because most of the airlines have uh, stopped flying. So are you telling us the distress call that... that the Mr. Co gentleman from the Coast Guard just described was not answered, or is it being answered? Are you taking it as a hoax? The question is, from the Coast Guard standpoint, they cannot find any boat out there. They had no boats out there themselves because of the rough weather, and they, they, they don't know whether it was a hoax or not. The storm is... The storm is, pretty, is, is hitting very hard. In terms of cleanup costs, do you anticipate having to ask the federal government for any money? Will the state be able to pay for it? Well, certainly, if, if the FEMA people are here, and that's why they are here, and they'll come in with their uh, assessment team, uh, cleanup assessment team, immediately upon the, uh, after the passage of the storm. We don't know. We don't have the slightest idea at this point Governor, what kind of dollars you're talking about. Governor, the roads are still open at this hour. Any idea if you plan to close any roads throughout the state? Well, many roads along the shoreline are closed by the local departments of police and fire. Uh, there's also been, believe it or not, some people, the sightseers, uh, trying to go to the beaches to see how high the waves are and so forth. So these are the kinds of things that are very difficult to control. However, many of the local area towns, police departments and fire departments are definitely uh, uh, closing roads along the shoreline. And those that are underwater, as soon as we know, the people are closing. When you say the main roads on the shoreline, are you talking about the interstate? Well, because there's an emergency situation here, and we want to make sure that the needed calls go through. Governor O'Neill briefing the press, and of course Marla Romash, you heard her uh, right there. Marla will be bringing us further details as the uh, as the hour continues here, as we continue our continuing coverage, team coverage of eyewitness news of Hurricane Gloria. Uh, the governor, of course, has just announced, in addition to the story that uh, that was told by the Coast Guard aide de camp, who was talking about uh, what perhaps is a a phony distress call that they uh, received along the lower Fairfield County shoreline this morning indicating a, perhaps a boat with 22 people on board in distress off Stamford. Uh, in addition to that story, which at the moment they are treating as if it, uh, it may be a hoax, the governor has announced that, uh, that Bradley has canceled most of its flights. Uh, buses will uh, be ceasing operation around the state at 12.30. We, of course, are into the height of the storm right now. The governor also indicating the DEP is on standby, watching for any of the dams that we may have problems with, and also that military personnel are on standby. Of course, we've already reported throughout the morning about the standby crews for Northeast Utilities, United Illuminating, Southern New England Telephone. Already, the governor says, we have 132,000 customers, electric customers, without power. Roughly speaking, that means about a half a million people out of the three million people in the state of Connecticut are without electric service right now. Northeast Utilities is saying that if you are without service today, they're asking for your patience. They've got all sorts of crews working overtime. They've hired additional contractors. They've even called back retired, what they're calling retired qualified employees to come back and help out. So they're saying they will have things under control, but it may take as long as three days. I, I, I was speaking with someone on the phone. They are asking for your patience. We're going to take a break right now, but when we come back, Brewster Priest will be here. He's over at the Weather Watch 3 Center. He's got the latest on Hurricane Gloria. We'll be right back. of the state of Connecticut as we are being battered by one of the worst storms of the century. Hurricane Gloria is upon us right now. We have been telling you throughout the day about the electrical blackouts that are taking place, the power lines that are coming down as tree limbs are pulled down by wind gusts of anywhere from uh, 60 to 70 miles an hour that we're getting in Connecticut right now. Wind gusts of 100 miles an hour already been clocked on Long Island. If you do lose contact, you do lose uh, the electricity in your home, we are now simulcasting all of our information over WDRC radio in Hartford. It is 1360 on your AM dial, and we will continue our broadcasting, of course, throughout the afternoon, and you can get the latest information from Eyewitness News by tuning in WDRC radio all afternoon long. They will be simulcasting our programming, and of course, you can get that on your portable battery-operated radios at the time. This has been a devastating storm. We've been watching for the past couple of days, and of course, as of last night, Gail, we were 
thinking that it may in fact turn and go ashore at North Carolina or Virginia. Well, we were certainly hoping that while you were down here doing a news break, Pat, we heard from the North Branford Police Department. They're concerned about phone outages. They are making a plea for ham operators. They say if you are a ham operator, they wish you would contact them. They are thinking that they may need your help with communication later on throughout the day. As we mentioned, Hurricane Gloria is hitting us now, but she has already left her mark on the Carolinas and Virginia. We get more on the damage that was caused in Virginia from Tom Walker in Washington via New Satellite 3. Gloria blew past a largely deserted Virginia beach just before daybreak, hurling gale force winds and torrents of rain at the coastline from 60 miles offshore. Along the Atlantic Avenue strip, six inches of rain left ankle-deep water in some oceanfront hotels. Wind gusts up to 70 miles per hour left an estimated 65,000 people without electricity and left others in need of immediate repair. I didn't expect it to blow uh, all these windows out. I got a couple of my side windows blown out, too. One high and dry hotel allowed guests to stay during the storm. We had guests that didn't have any place to go. That was the main reason. Others less high found their basements less dry. The thousands who had evacuated found shelter overnight in numerous area schools, even though they didn't find much sleep. The kids played all night long, and people talked all night because they said, well, we may not be able to talk tomorrow, so we'll talk tonight. <laughs> but reports of serious damage were few, and it didn't take long for the cleanup to begin. All in all, people at this resort city are counting themselves fortunate that after planning for Gloria's worst, her worst remained at sea. Tom Walker, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Yes, Tom remained at sea down there, but indeed the storm is coming ashore here in New England right now, and uh, in just a moment we'll be switching live down along the shoreline. We have several reports coming up. We do want to tell you right now to pass along the information that because of the high winds that are now battering especially the eastern third of the Connecticut coastline right now, the state has in fact, although they haven't shut down all of the highways, they have shut down access to the Gold Star Bridge between Groton and New London. And, of course, that's because of the, uh, the wind that is battering that bridge back and forth. As you may know, uh, they shut down in New York City today the World Trade Towers, the Twin Towers there, because of the high winds and the gusty winds. The uh, winds are battering us right now. A state of emergency has been declared in New York. In fact, they've even taken the torch off the Statue of Liberty and taken it inside. That's how concerned they are about the winds there. We, also, we have also received word about the eye of the hurricane. There is some concern that many people may have think that once the eye passed, that things are okay. That is not necessarily the case. That is not the case, in fact. Bruce DePries is standing by over in the Weather Watch 3 Weather Center to bring us an update on that. Hello, Bruce. What can you tell us? Well, Gail and Pat, I do uh, have what I feel is a very important message from Roland Lara with the National Weather Service in Hartford describing what effects uh, the shoreline areas may feel when the eye passes right over which uh, looks uh, like it will be very shortly within the next half hour or so. If we take a look at the live National Weather Service radar, you can see that we have a lot of rain across southern New England at the present time. But note in Long Island Sound, there appears to be a circular low, which uh, right now appears to be the high of, eye of Hurricane Gloria. It is moving very rapidly toward the north-northeast at 40 miles an hour, so we'll be crossing the shoreline very shortly. And here's the message we have from Roland Lero at the National Weather Service in Hartford. It says, remember, beware of the eye. The winds may stop suddenly and skies may partially clear. Don't think the hurricane is over. Soon the wind will be as violent as before, but in the opposite direction. So these conditions will be occurring along portions of the Connecticut coastline before too long. And we also have a few messages from the uh, Bridgeport National Weather Service office saying that portions of the Lordship area in Stratford have been flooded. Most of the coastal population has been evacu evacuated to safer areas there. And the uh, Weather Service office at Bridgeport at noon reports easterly winds at 55 miles an hour with gusts to 70, which is uh, approaching hurricane force. And here in downtown Hartford, we had a wind gust to 69 miles an hour, which is just under hurricane force as well. Uh, looking outside our window here at the Channel 3 Weather Center, the rain is coming down horizontally. Uh, winds gusting out of the east, driving that rain from uh, east to west across Hartford right now. And if anything, winds will be increasing as time goes on as uh, Hurricane Gloria continues to move northward across Connecticut before too long it will be crossing the shoreline areas. So it looks like uh, conditions will be deteriorating further inland over the next hour or so, but the storm again is moving very rapidly, so conditions should be improving as rapidly by late this afternoon and this evening. We'll continue to have updates as the afternoon goes on. Now back to you in the studio, Pat and Gail.
Bruce, I, I wonder, I don't know how strapped in you are at that chair there, but that, uh, that barometric reading that you were showing me before on the wall, I wonder if you can turn, if we can get the camera over to, sure. to show us uh, just how dramatically we've had the, the drop-off in the barometric pressure. Well, the barometric pressure has been dropping very rapidly, not only here in Hartford, but across all of southern New England. And uh, this is the uh, barograph that records the pressure over a period of time. It shows how the pressure is changing with time. And I don't know if you can make it out, but the uh, pressure is just nose diving downward because the hurricane is moving northward very rapidly. And that's uh, one reason why the pressure is falling so rapidly. That uh, trend will continue for the next hour or so. And then as the uh, eye of Hurricane Gloria moves by to the north of our latitude, that pressure should be rising. But again, conditions are going to be very bad for the next few hours, not improving till later on this afternoon. Pat and Gail? Bruce, for those of us who don't know, could you explain why a drop is so significant right now? Why the drop is a big deal now? Okay, the drop in pressure means that the storm is moving in our direction. Uh, already the storm is a very deep, intensified storm. And uh, the pressure, the center of low pressure is moving in our direction. So it's moving from an area of low pressure into an area of high pressure. So it, the pressure tends to drop as the storm center moves in our direction. Now the storm doesn't appear to, appear to be intensifying at this point. It's just the fact that the center of low pressure is moving closer to us, so that's why the barometric pressure is dropping across most of the area right now. Bruce, is, is, is this storm coming in where you thought it was going to come in during our earlier projections today, and we were talking about it being sort of to the eastern third of the state? Well, right now, if we uh, look at the radar again, it looks like the uh, eye of the hurricane is uh, trying to move toward the uh, New Haven uh, County area. Uh, there were some uh, thoughts that it might be moving toward the New London County shoreline, but right now it appears to be moving toward the central Connecticut coastline, uh, perhaps even a little bit to the west. We can't really say exactly for sure where the eye is, but according to radar, it looks like the eye is uh, approaching New Haven at the present time. It uh, moved past Long Island very quickly. There you can see the radar updating in the several ranges that we get, but it now appears that the eye is approaching uh, the general New Haven area and uh, really moving rapidly northward. Just about uh, an hour ago, it was south of Long Island, and here it is already approaching the Connecticut shoreline. So right now it looks like the central Connecticut coast will be the uh, main landfall for the eye of Hurricane Gloria. Okay, Bruce, thank you very much. Uh, we understand now that Dr. Neil Frank is standing by with us live at the National Hurricane Center down in Coral Gables, Florida. He, of course, has been with us and uh, for the past couple of days has been... Dr. Frank, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you can juggle all of these interviews all over the United States, but you've been doing a remarkable job, and uh, we we're sure that uh, your reassurance has been of great assistance and your warnings to the people here in southern New England. Uh, anything we can do at this point uh, except just stay inside? No, as a matter of fact, as you've already heard, I heard Bruce, and he said, hey, the storm is almost here, and that's right. And so the full brunt of the storm will be spreading across the coastline there within the next hour or two. Water levels could be as much as 8 to 12 feet above normal, and maybe even higher than that in the north end of the bays, and that's what really gives us a lot of concern. I would say this, though, that we're, that we're pleased that the storm has arrived at low tide as opposed to a few hours later or a few hours earlier when it would have been high tide. The thing that made the, thir the 38 hurricane so devastating is it came at exactly high tide, where in this particular case, at least you get a little bit of relief in the low tide. Dr. Frank, do you have any idea how long we will be in danger or how long we're in for a rough time today? Do you no, have any idea? Not, it's going to be over very fast because this storm is moving, moving 40 miles an hour or so. It's going to accelerate quite rapidly onto the north and the northeast. And by this evening, you should see uh, weather conditions returning back to more normal. I have to ask you about that. I've mentioned several times on the air today in our continuing coverage about the, the scientific miracles of the past uh, generation, the past 20 years, past 10 years. Uh, back in the old days, we wouldn't have known this storm was coming like this, would we? We'd have ship captains out there radioing in. Well, that's true, but I would want you to know that we do a very good job of observing today, and because of the we eyes of the weather satellite, you know, NOAA has some, some airplanes flying, and we've got weather satellites and coastal radars, that there's the appearance that we're doing a great job forecasting. Well, we do a great job of observing. There's no question about that. But the forecasting is still a dilemma, and we still are concerned that someday we may have some kind of a meteorological surprise, and you could have a storm like this move up to your coastline and maybe get very little notice that it was coming. But as fast as this has been moving, we really, in a sense, have ducked the bullet because it hasn't moved inland yet along any of the heavily populated areas. It's, it's coming right at us now, but uh, it did miss the Jersey Shore and all of that built-up area. 
That's right. The eye passed just offshore, and some, some of the folks over there are saying, well, it wasn't nearly as bad as we thought it was going to be. That's because they went through the weak side, and if you got to go through a hurricane in the New England area or on the Jersey coast, stay on the western quadrant. Don't get over in that east side that is now moving on shore in the eastern part of uh, the southern shore of Long Island. Dr. Right, Neil Frank, Dr. thank Frank. you very, very much for joining us again. We'll be back with you a bit later on in the day, I'm sure. Thank you, sir. This has been uh, one remarkable gentleman, by the way. I, See I don't him know, everywhere. I don't know how he, how he does it. Uh, just for your information, in fact, and people probably are quite curious, uh, there is what is called a satellite uplink down there at the National Hurricane Center. And, in fact, Dr. Frank probably is in the middle of another interview right now. He is made available to us, and uh, we do have the good fortune of having a gentleman like that who knows his business so well and is sitting at the command center for the United States mm -hmm. of watching this information and of charting this information, having it available to us. It has uh, truly been uh, a, good, a good sign, a good signal. Every time we've been able to turn to him, he's been able to give us the latest information. And as difficult a time as we are in right now here in southern New England, it is good to have the kind of reassurances and the kind of warnings that we have been able to have. Have you noticed he's been working, I'd say, 48 hours straight? It seems like, and he never looks tired, that guy. Nah, I guess Gotta not. Gotta <laughs> hand it to him. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going we're to tell you about some of the evacuations that are going on in the state of Connecticut. Stay with us. At least some of the businesses did uh, did decide to try to get their employees yeah, in early on. Some people thought they would actually be able to work today, or but up until half noon, a day or half something. a day. Anyway. They tried to get a half a day in because uh, business time is money, and they were afraid that uh, you lose a half a day, you lose a half a day of money. Mm -hmm. um, businesses, however, got the message loud and clear this morning. At least most businesses uh, shutting their doors, sending their people home. I say most because for some it was essential that they stay open. The time reads 927, but it just as easily could have read 527. The morning was dark as any evening, and the streets filled with people heading home almost as soon as they had arrived. Hartford's banks and insurance companies, the city's biggest employers, decided to shut down early. Does that frighten you a little? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm frightened. The wind's picking up. It's nerve-wracking. And they left it up to everybody's discretion. I think part of that is that it's difficult for people to work. They're just, nobody was doing anything anyway. This is uh, a worst case scenario. Uh, Don Friedman, who heads up the Traveler's Research, says they shut down with good reason. He's already plotted a new course for the storm, already has begun to project storm damage. His computer program showing New London and New Haven suffering the worst. What's your estimate in terms of damage now for Southern New England? Uh, still in terms of billions of dollars, it's very difficult to have a specific number because of this high, very, very strong sensitivity of the track of the storm relative to the distribution of properties, exposed properties. Because any damage is so much dependent not only on wind speed and direction, but also on population density, the insurance companies say it'll probably be sometime be tomorrow before they have some accurate damage figures, but they expect each of uh, Connecticut's major cities along the shoreline to suffer hundreds of millions, not millions, but hundreds of millions of dollars in damage because Jim, of this storm. When somebody has a, this is going to sound like a pedestrian question, I suppose, as a homeowner, but when somebody has a damage claim to file, is there any need to do that right away, or can, can folks just try and clean up their damage and wait until Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to get in touch with their agents? Are they going to have to try and get these claims in immediately? Uh, the agents will be out there. As a matter of fact, the major insurance companies have teams in New England now. These teams were going to go to the south if the major damage had been done there, but they are in New England. And uh, these damaged claims people will be going around to homeowners, to policy owners. They know who the policy owners are. And uh, they will be going wow. to them, and they will be helping out on the spot. If it is serious, if it's a major, if you've lost your house, they're going to be there that day. Mm -hmm. They're going to be there to help you. Um, if it's not serious, then a lot of the damage is going to have to wait. I would think that they would, be, they would be pretty understanding, though, Jim, if you don't get to them right away under these circumstances. It, I wouldn't think that it would be that big of a deal if you can't file a claim right away. Unless, you're absolutely, in, uh, unless you're absolutely in a, a serious situation, situation. Sure. it probably would uh, pay to just wait a while. And not bad it. advice either to tell people to take pictures of that damage before they try and do some of the cleanup work. Absolutely. Okay, thanks Jim. Thanks, Jim. Uh, with us right now, Brian Garnett, who is going to be joining us now on the telephone. Brian's been down in, uh, in New London. He's down by New London Harbor right now. And uh, Brian, you must be getting just about some of those top winds coming in right on the water. Is that right? At this point, Pat, apparently this is not the top wind, but right now I am having a difficult time standing here at this payphone. I am right on the water. Uh, some of the sailboats out in front of me here have begun to sink already. There is one already up on the rocks to my left. In front of me, a group of fishermen that, that has tried to stay with their boat 
is valiantly now trying to save the vessel. Uh, some of the ropes are broke, and the vessel is in danger of going up on the rocks, and they're trying to get more ropes on it before they do lose it. There are trees and wires down all over the place down here. Police have gone through the uh, low-lying areas next to the water with bullhorns telling people to evacuate. It's been going on all morning. There are high schools and uh, community centers throughout the area of New London and uh, Groton that are uh, full now uh, with people that have evacuated in those high schools. I have been told a short while ago the Gold Star Bridge between Groton and New London was cold, uh, closed rather, because of the high winds. And as I say, we're probably another uh, half an hour or 45 minutes away from the worst that uh, Gloria will have to offer this area. Brian, we can get an idea how bad it is just listening to the connection. It's really horrible. I feel sorry for you out there. Do you have any idea how many people have been evacuated? I don't, Gail. Uh, the, uh, the senior citizen centers and the community centers and high schools I've gone to, have at, uh, some of them have had over 100, 200 people in them. Uh, most of the low-lying areas, all the shoreline areas have been evacuated. Uh, right now, what the total figure is, I don't think anybody knows because uh, they're still trying to get the people out and make sure they're out and safe. But the wind is unbelievable. Uh, I weigh about 170. So those of you who are saying, are they going to have the lotto numbers? The answer is no, not tonight. They have delayed that. Uh, there are some other key cancellations, at least for many people around, uh, around Connecticut and uh, southern New England. Dave Smith is going to join us right now. Tell us about a little bit of the reshuffling of CRC radio in Hartford. Uh, it's an AM station, 1360 on your dial. If you do lose power today, of course, we do hope you have a portable radio and fresh batteries nearby. The storm is moving through, as we have been telling you for uh, several hours now. The storm has arrived in Connecticut. We have the top winds uh, expected very shortly. And, of course, uh, we are going to be sustaining continuing damage throughout the afternoon hours. And we have received word just in that the Spanish radio station has been knocked off the air, so it's making it very difficult for people who speak and undersp understand Spanish to understand what's going on. That's why Diane Alverio is here. That's right. Uh, the Hispanic community here in Connecticut pretty much depends on WLVH and WRYM uh, in cases of emergency. And WLVH, which is the big radio station, is off the air. It went off the air at 10.30 this morning. So what we've done is translated some information into Spanish uh, in hopes that we can get some of this information across about Hurricane Gloria. Voy a tratar aquí de hablar en español a darle una información. Queremos informarle al público que la estación de radio WLVH fue del aire a debido a problemas causados por el huracán Gloria. El gobernador O'Neill también ha declarado el estado de Connecticut en un estado de emergencia. Estamos atravesando la tormenta en estos momentos. Más de 50,000 personas se han quedado sin electricidad y han evacuado en la zona de la costa más de 50,000 personas debido al peligro del huracán. El huracán Gloria viene con vientos de 130 millas por hora. Se le recom recomienda al público a mantenerse en sus casas. No use los teléfonos si no es por causa de emergencia. También unidades policíacas están patrullando las calles en caso de una emergencia. También una nota final, la estación de radio WRYM va a empezar a transmitir de nuevo en español a las 3 y media de la tarde. Aquí también en el Canal 3 tra trataremos de mantenerlos informados. Gracias. Pat and Gail. Gracias. Gracias. Okay. 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 Absolutely. Thank you very much, Diane. And we will continue to get Certainly. that information out as best we can. Uh, we do have to pass along a couple of uh, critical items right now. We're going to be going to Charlie Bagley in just a moment. If Charlie can get ready, and we can get a camera to him because the eye of the hurricane apparently is approaching uh, the Connecticut shoreline right now. But uh, we just have had uh, information from nor Northeast Utilities. We told you before, we now have better than 130,000 customers without power around the state. That was the last, um, that was I'm getting a thumbs up over there. Is that for Charlie? We're going to be ready with Charlie in a moment. We have more than 130,000 customers already without power around uh, southern New England, and we now understand a state of alert has been declared at Connecticut Yankee, the nuclear power plant. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we will be updating that situation for you. As we reported earlier from Marla Romash, the uh, nuclear power plants at Millstone Point and Connecticut Yankee both uh, or all have been or are being shut down because of the uh, impending storm. And it's Just my understanding, uh, too, Pat, that that's the first time a state of alert has ever been issued for that plant. That's right. That's right. Well, let's get uh, over to Charlie right now. We understand he's ready and can show us some rather dramatic pictures uh, on the radar. Charlie? Uh, Pat and Gail, that's true. Uh, the l last few minutes we've been monitoring the progress of the precipitation moving towards us. The eye of the storm, you can just see the uh, edge of it moving into New Haven right now. It did come from south of Islip on Long Island. It is affecting the Connecticut shoreline at the present time. 
The highest wind gusts on Long Island themselves are reporting winds over 100 miles an hour. At Bridgeport, 81 miles an hour, and in downtown Hartford, we've had a gust of 73 miles an hour. We will continue tracking this, but it appears that everyone east of New Haven is going to be in the area that Dr. Frank was talking about, the worst possible place to be, east of the eye of the storm. That's where you get the maximum winds, the maximum uh, uh, sea surges, and during the balance of the afternoon, uh, we will be following the eye through the area. It looks as though it'll be getting to the Hartford area probably by uh, 1.30 or quarter of two, but we'll be back with frequent updates. Pat and Gail? Okay, thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, we do want to let people know some specific information about shelters that are available, and uh, we will be continuing our coverage now, but these are some of the shelters that are available to you right now. The Hartford High School has a shelter going on, Weaver High School, Buckley High School. All of those shelters are located in Hartford, by the way. Let's see, in Bloomfield, you can find a refuge at the middle school at 390 Park Avenue. That's in Bloomfield. In New Britain, New Britain Senior High School and Pulaski School, that's the Slade Middle School. There are three shelters operating in New Britain at this hour. In Windsor, Windsor High School at 50 Sage Park Road. The shelters, I am told, are especially hel helpful for the elderly people. The number there is 688-4901. You will be provided with food and a place to sleep. East Windsor High School and St. Catherine's Church are also operating shelters in East Windsor. Weathersfield, there is only one shelter operating in Weathersfield. That's at the high school in that town. Rocky Hill Shelters at Stevens School, that's at 329 Orchard Street. The number there, 563-1451. But be advised, please do not use your phone unless you need to. The best advice is if you need a shelter to go there, you do not need to call first. In Newington, the shelter is open at the John Wallace Middle School. That's at Halloran Drive. Okay. Winners means <laughs> absolutely nothing because none of us are a winner today. And as Pat mentioned, the lotto game's even been canceled, so That's you can't right. even win that. Let's see. I think we, uh, we have now made contact with uh, Celeste Ford, who has been uh, out and about along the Connecticut shoreline. Celeste, are you there with us yeah. now? That's for the new break. Okay, we're trying. Celeste? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wonder if you can tell us where you are and what the latest is. Okay, we're apparently going to be having some difficulties getting Celeste back on the line at this point. Uh, obviously some telephone problems, but I know that uh, we do have reports that are coming in both from Celeste and from Lucille Caliendo, and I'm, uh, I'm not sure whether or not those tapes are ready at this point. If we have either one of those reports that has just come in, we could get to, uh, to one of those before we reestablish our contact with Celeste. We do want to remind you once again, though, about the question of uh, downed power lines, because that is becoming the increasingly the most serious problem that we have around the state of Connecticut right now. The question of those power lines being down, just don't go near them. That is the simplest answer we can give to people when it comes to a And it seems, kind of it seems, Pat, such common sense advice, but, you know, people will see that and think, well, maybe I can just sort of scooch it out of the way. That is a very, very hazardous thing to do. Please don't do it. We also heard from the governor's office this morning that there have been evacuations in just about every town from Greenwich to Southington. Over in Clinton, when, they, when the people were evacuated this morning, the select woman said to the people, I cannot protect your property, but I can protect your life. Please leave your home. Good advice down there. Those evacuations, uh, of course, are good for most of the day. We've been hearing from our weather people that we are expecting this storm is actually going to be going by uh, within the next several hours, but we're at the height of it right now. I understand we now have the videotape of uh, Celeste Ford's report from the old Lyme, old Saybrook area a bit earlier on today. Can I have your attention, please? Residents of this area. Old Lyme issued an evacuation order at 6 o'clock this morning. Approximately 1,000 people in the low-lying beach areas packed up and moved out to higher, safer ground. Before leaving, homeowners tried to minimize their potential for property damage, taking what precautions they could. Well, we've been preparing to, uh, for the storm and to get uh, board up and tape up and get our furniture up above so the water hits so that we won't uh, have damaged furniture. 50 people had already sought shelter at Center School in Old Lyme. The building withstood the hurricane of 1938, providing safety for hundreds. It would do the same today. We'd advise them to, first of all, leave their pets at home. Uh, we cannot care for pets or admit them to the, uh, to the emergency shelter. Uh, any uh, non-perishable food items that they could bring, blankets, pillows, sleeping bags, uh, would be helpful in the situation. Uh, other than that, a change of clothes. Authorities in Old Lyme are going door to door, making certain residents evacuate this area. Those who refuse are asked to list their names and their next of kin. 
The rain fell on and off throughout the morning. White caps broke on the waters of the Long Island Sound. At this point, the weather conditions resemble any other storm, except for the howling wind. It warns of the fury that's heading towards Connecticut's coast. Celeste Ford, Channel 3 Eyewitness News, Old Lyme. That report came in about uh, an hour and a half ago. And of course, during that period of time, we have had the fury of that storm hitting us along the shoreline right now. We've had already hurricane force winds in the eye of the storm, as Charlie Bagley showed us just a short time ago, is right now covering the city of New Haven, which means that in just a few minutes, the winds will be starting up again as that eye moves. Afternoon, and it should be moving on by rapidly to the north by late this afternoon. So right now here in downtown Hartford, conditions appear to be very bad at times. It's kind of a squally situation, but I expect the conditions will remain very bad here in Hartford for about the next hour or so. Pat and Gail? How far inland, Bruce, can the, uh, can the winds be sustained? How, uh, you know, when we talk about 100 mile an hour winds on Long Island, we're already talking hurricane mm -hmm. force along our shoreline. Uh, just uh, what can we anticipate perhaps up as far north as Springfield? Well, the uh, maximum winds are right around the eye of the hurricane. Those are, that's called the wall cloud. That's where your highest winds are. And uh, gale force winds extend well out from the center. That's what we're experiencing now, occasionally approaching hurricane force. But gale may... force being what, Bruce? Gale force winds being from 39 to 53 or 54 miles an hour. And we're experiencing uh, actual storm winds. I'm sorry, uh, we're above gale force winds now. We're actually hitting storm winds, approaching hurricane force at times. Again, the maximum wind gust 73 just under hurricane force. But we may see wind gusts uh, over 73 miles an hour in the hurricane force area as that eye continues moving northward from Hartford. And again, uh, what we saw on radar, the eye of the storm approaching the New Haven area, the uh, strongest winds are in a circular band right around that eye. It's known as the wall cloud. And that's uh, what will be progressing northward through Connecticut in the next hour or so. Bruce, what is hurricane force? Is it 74 or 75 miles per hour? I believe it's uh, 74 miles an hour. Anything up uh, below that is uh, what we call storm winds. And anything below 54 miles an hour well, in the range of 39 to 54 miles an hour is what we call gale warnings. Uh, from uh, 54 to 73 miles an hour, what we call storm winds. And above 73 miles an hour, we have hurricane force winds. Uh, right now, they're approaching hurricane force here in Hartford. But again, as that eye and the wall cloud approaches northward uh, toward the Hartford area, it seems to be moving due northward toward us right now. We could see winds in excess of 73 miles an hour. Okay. Thank you very much, Bruce. We'll be getting back to you. And of course, as we mentioned before, Lucille Caliendo is, uh, is down in New Haven right now, where we believe the eye is uh, located right now near the city, and we are trying to establish contact with her. In the meantime, we have Celeste, Celeste back on. Celeste Ford, you're in Old Lyme, I think? No, Gail. Right now, I'm the Civil Preparedness Headquarters in Westbrook. The power is out in this town right now, and telephone lines are down in most of the area. In fact, this appears to be one of the few lines still open. Earlier today, Again, apparently we're having some technical problems there. The feedback that you're hearing is coming from somewhere apparently uh, within our own building here as we're getting that call in. And, and what you're hearing is it coming back over a, a speaker. If we can get the information, I wonder if we could get the information from Celeste, we can uh, pass that information along. I know that those phone lines are now becoming quite precious, especially in that area along the shoreline. We do have some uh, further information to pass along concerning emergency medical care that is going to be available naturally. All of the hospitals and medical facilities are on alert around the entire region, and uh, we understand that several of the facilities are actually extending their hours tonight, anticipating that there will be the possibility of personal injuries, people coming in who might be uh, coming in asking for some uh, assistance. We've also gotten some information about a shelter. This concerns a shelter in East Windsor. The shelter at St. Catherine's Church has been closed, and they are asking you, if you need help there, to go to East Windsor High School. Another cancellation, it seems very fr frivolous at this point, but I want to pass it on to you anyway. The Alabama concert in Springfield has been canceled. Okay. Uh, Charlie Bagley has uh, promised us that he would be getting back to us with his complete forecast. We'll be getting to that in just a moment, find out how quickly the storm may be moving away. But in the meantime, Mary Ali Newman, three on your side, is joining us now live, and she has uh, further information for us. Mary Ali? We've been over this once before, but it certainly bears repeating. We're talking about after the storm. We're certainly concerned right now about what's going to happen before, but afterwards there are a lot of things we need to keep in mind. It's just as important to keep our heads after the storm, and safety must always be on our mind. Power lines could be down, lots of them. Absolutely do not touch them. Assume it's a live wire and don't go near it. Now, if you don't see utility crews out trying to repair those lines, you should call uh, your local power company. You should look in the yellow pages and find the customer service number in the phone book and report the down line. 
All of your electrical appliances should be unplugged. Leave them that way because if they're plugged in and your whole neighborhood is doing the same thing, when the electricity comes back on, the voltage could be very low and that would damage your appliances. Now, the electricity, when it does come back on, you should plug things in one at a time. Keep your refrigerator and freezer closed. You want to keep things as cold for as long as you can. And if the electricity is off too long and meat starts thawing in the freezer, you may want to throw it away. Those thawed vegetables can be cooked and eaten, though. And it's best to depend on canned food. Use them. You should have an ample supply. We've told you to do that in these pre-storm items. So depend on your canned food. If you have a gas water heater, now that could be in your basement or in your garage, and if it floods, the water will, be ex the water will extinguish the pilot light. Now there are safety devices built into that, so you shouldn't even worry. If you have a gas range, you're all set to cook. That is, you may not be if you have an electric igniter in that range, so you'll have to light, it, light those burners with a match and you will not be able to use the oven. Water. Well, it should be boiled if you have drawn that for an extended amount of time, and you might have to be creative in this one. You could use a camper stove, your fireplace, or even your gas grill. Now, we're talking about after the storm, so go outside to do it because some bad things could happen if you're near some gas main that is uh, ready to explode. So do not do this inside in some cases. And your neighbors. You need to check on them, especially the elderly and those who may be sick. Uh, we have to depend on a buddy system here that uh, in a time of emergency you need to depend on each other and just kind of group together. If you need to go out in a car, use one car and just make sure everyone's all right and think about safety foremost. Good advice because for a lot of people this may be the last time they'll be able to hear you if the power keeps going out That's the way right. it is. That's right. Yeah. We will remind people while we're talking about the power and the, some of the problems we've had with the power that we are being simulcast right now on WDRC AM 1360 in Hartford, and we will, co of course, continue our broadcasts all afternoon long here from Eyewitness News to bring you up to date with the latest information coming from the Emergency Storm Center and, of course, from Weather Watch 3. Time now, Weather Watch 3 speaking of it. Time now for another report from Charlie Bagley. He's standing by, ready to bring you the latest. Charlie? Okay, Gail, I'd like to do a little bragging first. Tuesday evening at 5.30 and 6 o'clock, well, we were talking, well, first I'll show you the radar. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, realize I had it punched up. Okay, the eye of the storm itself. Uh, Bruce has been talking about this, showing you the pictures. The eye is moved, has moved inland. It's pretty much surrounding New Haven right now. These heavy blue bands you see here, uh, some almost like tropical-like uh, rain conditions, heavy squalls. Uh, there's a lot of rain falling out there. The forecasts were that it's possible to get 5 to 10 inches of rain from the storm system as it moves into the area. And, of course, we had additional rain coming in from the uh, west this morning. As much as 3 inches of rain were being reported in parts of New York State. Okay, now let me do my little bragging for just a minute here. Uh, as early as Tuesday evening, we were talking about a major storm on Friday with strong, heavy, strong gusty winds, heavy downpours. We got the whole thing. We never varied from that initial forecast. And the update that we have at the present time showing how the path of the storm has been going from 6 o'clock this morning was just off the Virginia shore. It's been skirting the shore all morning long. Just about noontime, it ended uh, around Islip, Long Island, and now the eye of the storm itself is in the New Haven area. Looking at the projection for the next few hours, it's going to be coming right up over Connecticut, up into the eastern part of New Hampshire, and up into Maine by later this evening. Winds greater than 75 miles an hour, torrential rain, flooding along the shoreline, uh, tremendous beach erosion. Uh, we're expecting the waves to be at least 10 feet high. We're calling for the uh, tides themselves to be 10 to 12 feet above normal. The next high tides will be coming in later this evening. And as Dr. Frank mentioned earlier, uh, we should be grateful that the high tide and the storm surge are not to be being here at the same time. But even without that, there are still significant problems, and they will be continuing around the area during the afternoon. So the best advice is uh, stay indoors if you at all possibly can. And uh, if you're going to be in the area where the eye of the storm moves through, you'll probably have about 20, 25 minutes where it's going to be sunny, it's going to be dry, the streets will almost dry in it. But then very few minutes later, everything is going to be coming, the wind's picking up from the opposite direction. Okay, at 6 o'clock this morning, there's where the precipitation was. At noontime, as you can see, it was moving up into the area. The uh, clouds, again, just in the east, northeastern states, the rest of the country has some fine fair weather coming our way. They'll be coming here very quickly. Current weather shows the low pressure with the frontal system and the hurricane both affecting southern New England this afternoon. And I'm saying in the 70s, winds estimated from the east at 75 miles an hour plus the major hurricane on Long Island Sound. Again, very high waves, high tides, uh, hurricane winds, uh, poor visibility. 
And the way things are shaping up for tomorrow, some beautiful weather coming back into the area, and that will be continuing on into Sunday. Okay, so the detailed forecast that we have for southern New England for the balance of the afternoon, expect the worst because we have it right now. The center of the storm is over southern New England. It's moving into the New Haven area. We will have hurricane force winds being reported at quite a few stations at quite a few times during the afternoon and the early evening. Again, rainfall amounts could equal 5 to 10 inches. Now, uh, Bruce, Hilton, and I will be uh, back off and on during the afternoon with significant and timely updates. Pat and Gail? Don't go anywhere, Charlie, as they, <laughs> yeah. as they say in the business. Uh, okay. We will be back to you. In fact, uh, while you were just uh, on a moment ago, Hilton brought me in the latest wind report, and this is uh, rather dramatic, Charlie. I don't know if you have a comment on this, but it says the Bradley winds at 1 o'clock, which is right now, 1 o'clock, the Bradley winds east-southeast at 26 miles an hour with gusts to 43 miles an hour. The winds at Sikorsky Airport outside Bridgeport, east 69 miles an hour. That's the wind speed being reported right now. That's a sustained wind with gusts at 83 miles an hour. What do you think, Charlie? It doesn't surprise me. Uh, I'm curious as to what uh, some of the uh, towns in the eastern part of Long Island Sound might be experiencing. Of course, the official station is at the airport at uh, Bridgeport. Quite a few other places that have the instruments have probably closed down. But I would expect maximum winds to be uh, further along the eastern uh, shoreline of Connecticut. And again, that's the area east of where the center of the storm moves inland is where you'll get the maximum damage. And of course, as we all know, Pat, we've got uh, many shoreline communities there that uh, will be having a very tough time of it. Okay. Okay, Charlie, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. We will uh, take a break now. Be no. back. Yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will. We've been, uh, we're still trying to establish our contact right now with Lucille Caliendo yeah. in the eye of the hurricane right now in New Haven. And uh, we will be back uh, with continuing team coverage of Eyewitness News in just a moment, Hurricane Gloria. Stay with us. Stay indoors. We'll see you later on. Team coverage of Hurricane Gloria, the storm which we had anticipated last night would be heading right up toward the New England shore, has done exactly that. We are, as the National Hurricane Center said yesterday, looking down at gun barrel. Well, the trigger has been pulled today. We have hurricane force winds that have blasted across Long Island and slammed into the shores of the state of Connecticut and the state of Rhode Island within the past two hours. We are experiencing severe problems around the state. We are trying to pass along the safety tips that we can to you. We urge you all to stay inside, stay calm, to uh, follow the advice of the experts when it comes to how to deal with this storm right now and how to deal with the conditions that will follow after the storm quickly moves through. The phone company has also asked that if you don't have to use the phone, it's, I know it's common to want to call and find out how relatives are doing or friends are doing. They're saying if you don't have to use the phone, if it's not an emergency, please don't use it because it's jamming up the phone lines and creating a problem for the phone company and for people who really need to use the phones. As Pat mentioned, there have been a lot of evacuations, a lot of closings this morning. Marlene Schneider is standing by in the newsroom now to bring us the latest on that part of the story. Marlene? Well, Gail and Pat, uh, we want to pass along the information as it comes through. We are just, you know, we're getting reams of it right now, and some of it is going to be a little bit repetitive because you all have been on all morning uh, long, but I don't think there's really anything when we're in a storm situation of this magnitude. I don't think there is anything that um, at this point uh, you can't repeat too often. We do want to mention that uh, in the city of Hartford, Mayor Thurman Milner has now declared a state of emergency in the city, and he put a driving ban in effect as of noontime which means that any uh, vehicle that is not an, an authorized emergency vehicle has been banned from driving on uh, city, uh, city roads in the city of Hartford right now. The mayor obviously wanting folks to stay home uh, off the roads or if they're already at work and they weren't released from work, they are to stay there. That right now is uh, what the uh, experts are telling us. The safest place to be is uh, somewhere inside wherever you happen to be. Uh, Gail and Pat, you have been mentioning uh, all those uh, emergency shelters that have been opened up for people who have been worried about uh, living in low-lying areas. We have one more to add to you. I'm not sure you, you mentioned this, but as of 1 o'clock, the city, uh, town of Glastonbury opened up a shelter at the Naubuck School on Griswold Street, and they have an emergency number in the town of Glastonbury. If you have any information or you're worried about it, that's 633-6234. Uh, we have had some reports of road problems in the city of Hartford. We have uh, we had word of a cave-in at uh, Pearl and Trumbull Streets in downtown Hartford, but since at this stage of the game uh, there are not too many people driving downtown, that shouldn't be a problem. In the uh, city of Bristol, uh, Mrs. Paris called me just a few moments ago. She lives on Castle Road. She said a tree, a 50-foot tree in her yard, not, it didn't just bend over, it didn't just split, but the entire tree uprooted and took her whole lawn with it. She says it rolled it up like it was a carpet and threw it over in the neighbor's yard. So she, uh, in Bristol, they are worried about some very strong winds. And that's about the latest. We'll be uh, having periodic updates all afternoon long. Pat, Gail? 
Thank you, Marlene. We do want to point out to you, too, when we talk about the phone service Gail mentioned a moment ago, one of the critical things that they've had, one of the critical problems they've had today are people trying to call up the information number, mm. the uh, operator-assisted uh, phone calls. It is, uh, you know, it is impossible for the operators to be able to handle that right now. They have thousands of people who are on standby who are working on emergency situations. And please, just uh, don't make uh, such phone calls unless absolutely necessary. And if you do need emergency assistance in every community, people are going through your neighborhoods. They know where the uh, worst damage is. And they, of course, are available on the emergency numbers in many communities. That's a 911. You have your own local numbers. And, uh, of course, those people are more than happy to be trying to be of assistance to you. But please, the, the calls of uh, trying to get somebody's telephone number out of the book are yeah, not, please not out the of the book. Please use the phone book this time. That's We've it. also been told that in Hartford, the police cruisers will be driving up and down the street if you need help, flag down a police officer. That's the advice from Hartford today. Let's go Bruce back DePriest. over to uh, Bruce DePriest now. He's standing by in the weather center, and uh, he's up against the window right now. And, Bruce, I'm not sure I like seeing you against that, that heavy glass, although I guess that's pretty well reinforced. But that's quite a picture we have behind you. Very graphic. Say, this is the east window of Channel 3, the Channel 3 weather office. And the rain and debris has been pelting up against this window in the last couple of hours with increasing force. We've been talking about how the uh, storm center has been progressing northward through Connecticut and uh, the possibility of hurricane force winds reaching Hartford before too long. And just a few minutes ago, we had a wind gust of 77 miles an hour in Hartford, which is hurricane force without a doubt. Now, this is the east window. It's awfully dark outside. There's uh, still some traffic going by, but conditions look very ominous outside. You can hardly see uh, more than a half a mile or so with the uh, wind-driven rain, rain moving horizontally outside, and it's really pelting up against this east window here at Channel 3. So it looks like conditions will continue to be bad for the next hour or so as the storm center continues to progress northward. Then by uh, later on this, e uh, this afternoon, we should see some improvement as the storm center rapidly accelerates away to our northeast. We check out radar. You can see exactly where the storm center is at. It is uh, moving inland over Connecticut right now. We uh, have the storm center. It looks like it's right along the Connecticut shoreline. And those dark blue bands of rain you see are uh, squalls associated with Hurricane Gloria. Squalls are very common with hurricane systems. And therefore, the uh, wind uh, and rain may let up at one time and then come down like gangbusters at another time. These uh, conditions will persist over uh, much of Connecticut for the next hour or so. But again, conditions should be improving rapidly by this evening as the center of the storm moves rapidly away to the northeast. Uh, latest report indicates that the storm outside right now is moving toward the north northeast at 40 miles an hour so luckily these conditions won't be with us all that long pat and gail today i know we were talking about a tornado watch i assume that it's still in effect we haven't mentioned that in the last hour or so what's the status of the tornado watch a tornado watch is very common with any tropical type system it's almost uh, taken for granted that it will be put into effect where the hurricane or tropical storm does move into land uh, as of yet, we haven't had any reports of any tornado activity, but it's always a, a distinct possibility with uh, tropical-like storms and hurricanes. Tornado oh. watch means that the tornado conditions watch are means likely? Exact, well, not exactly likely. The conditions are, are a prime. There's a good conditions for tornado formation. A, a tornado warning means that a tornado has been sighted and conditions for tornado activity are uh, imminent, but a watch means be on the lookout for the chance for a tornado. It's not as imminent as a warning, but conditions are ripe for tornadoes to occur. And again, that's a very typical, uh, usual situation with any hurricane or tropical storm. Remains in effect till what time tonight, Bruce? I'm not exactly sure what time it remains into effect, but I would imagine that tornado watch will be expiring by late this afternoon or yeah, early it was, this Yeah, it was originally posted at 6 p.m. Uh, 6 p.m.? Yeah, but uh, of course, with the speed, the rapidity of this uh, storm moving through right now, uh, we really might be out of the woods on that. Bruce, is it fair to say that as the eye passes over, we still are only through one half of the storm, or does it, because of the, the escalating speed, does, uh, does it move away more quickly than it came on? Well, it is continuing to accelerate. Uh, the storm, uh, again, is moving about 40 miles an hour, uh, maybe a little bit faster by now. The latest report we had was as of noontime today. Uh, what uh, the gist of your question is, I take it, is uh, what will happen if the eye crosses over a certain point? No, I, I'm really saying, are we only one halfway through? Are we only halfway through the damage of this storm? Do we, can we expect okay. the same kind of damage from the tail end that we got from the front end? Well, the worst part of the storm is toward the northeastern quadrant of a hurricane. Uh, what will happen is the eye passes by to the north of any given location as winds will turn right around to the opposite direction. Uh, again, right now, the wind is coming in from the east here in Hartford. But once the eye passes by north of our latitude, it will be coming in from the west. 
at uh, perhaps hurricane force, but again, it looks like the worst part of the storm system is toward the east or northeastern quadrant of the actual eye of the center of the, or of the storm. Okay, Bruce, thank you. We'll be back with you shortly and uh, okay. talking to you more as we chart the progress of Hurricane Gloria as she comes over southern New England right now. We've just received word that Lucille Caliendo is ready with her package. Now, Lucille is in the New Haven area, which is right now about the eye of the hurricane. Right, right. This, Lucille, we have not been able to contact Lucille as yet in the New Haven area. She is, in fact, out in the eye of the hurricane right now. We understand doing some, uh, some reporting, which we will be getting on the air as quickly as we can. A bit earlier today, though, Lucille was out along the Connecticut shoreline out to the east. Charlie was talking about uh, wanting to get those official wind readings that we're going to be getting from the eastern end of Connecticut's uh, shoreline. Lucille was out there this morning and she uh, was following as some of the folks were evacuated and brings us this taped report from a short time ago. And, and if they feel that they want to stay there, they're high, they're very high. It's kind of yeah. unique, you know. Yeah. That, that'll be all right. all right. But for the more vulnerable residents of the Stony Creek section of Brantford, the evacuation was not suggested, it was ordered. But for the low-lying areas near the water and along the water, uh, we feel it's in their best interest to, uh, to require them to go to shelter. And knowing what a storm here can do, there were two other homes here in this cove before the hurricane of 38 wiped them out. Most residents left. I know that the announcement was that it was mandatory, so I think that we'd probably best, uh, uh, you know, comply. Uh, my son is down here. We're going to go board up the cottage. We have a cottage down below on the seawall. We're going to go board that up, and then as soon as we uh, accomplish that, then I think we'll, we'll go up to his house. In Guilford, it was pretty much the same story. Hundreds of residents evacuated to local shelters. They respected Gloria's potential, and they went there to wait her out. It's clearly a significant storm. Uh, there's, at this point in time, there's no question that we'll be hit by something ranging from a, a grade one to a grade three hurricane. So you had no qualms about coming up to a shelter? No, it was an easy decision. That report from Lucille Caliendo, and again, Lucille uh, has since left that area to the east uh, shore of New Haven, returned to the city, and uh, is now doing some reporting for us on the eye of the hurricane, which is passing over that area right now. The eye of the storm moving up through the Connecticut, uh, the midsection of Connecticut, and is expected by tonight to be well beyond us. Uh, it is remarkable the speed with which this storm can move once it gets going. And sometimes I heard, Pat, that you're lulled into a false sense of security with the eye, that it seems very calm and the sun is out, but it's really still a very dangerous situation for those of you in the New Haven area and the state of Connecticut in general. We have lots more coming up. We will be having further live reports, the latest updates from the Storm Center at the State Armory, and, of course, we'll be checking back in with the folks at Weather Watch 3 and the National Hurricane Center in just a moment, but uh, we'll take a break right now. Going. Right now, as you know, she's in Connecticut. That's right, and while she is here, we turn now to Bob Sheets, who's the assistant director at the National National Hurricane Center. Mr. Sheets, can you hear us right now? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, this is Channel 3 calling uh, from Hartford, Connecticut, and we are sitting right now watching the eye of the storm come over New Haven and head in our direction. Uh, what's the latest word on how quickly she might be moving through? Well, it's going to move through very rapidly. It's moving something like uh, 35 to 40 miles per hour right now, and it's probably going to continue at least at that speed for the next several hours as it moves across that area and right on up across Maine been uh, sitting here on the air for most of the the morning with all of this following the storm coming in are you receiving any damage reports from further down uh, down the Atlantic coast uh, in terms of we've heard earlier about North Carolina and Virginia but about New Jersey or New York were there any severe uh, impacts uh, from the storm now we're really not following that we're more concerned about what's going to happen in the future right on up the coast there and so that's really what our concerns are about where will it be will, will it be uh, going will it be posing a problem for example for Boston they could have some of a problem. We're, we're expecting some waters along those coasts, maybe three to five feet above normal. Fortunately, it's going, coming up in here near low tide, so it's not going to be as extreme as we would have if it came in at high tide. Another problem is, of course, in those large cities like Boston that have high-rise buildings that sometimes the winds aloft are a little stronger. The winds that near the surface are going to be reduced on that right side of the storm as well as on the left side, but those taller buildings can cause a problem. Mr. Sheets, I know you said that the hurricane will pass through the area very quickly. What exactly do you mean by that? How long should we be concerned? What's the danger point for us? Well, for the, it should be abreast of uh, that area within the next hour or so, so you're already getting some of those conditions, and it's probably going to last for another two or three hours after that and start reducing. What advice do you have for people here in southern New England and Connecticut? I know you, you're doing a lot of different states right now. We're talking about Connecticut. What advice do you have for us up here? Well, I hope that everybody's already prepared, that they're already in places of uh, refuge and not get out and wander around because things can get blown around. Glass can break, fly through the air, and so they should stay in safe uh, areas. 
Thank you very much. Bob Sheets, the assistant director at the National Hurricane Center, will be back in touch with the center a bit later on today. And, of course, uh, we continue to track Hurricane Gloria as she comes up right through the center of Connecticut. And, of course, the uh, command center, the core, if you will, of the state's emergency operations have been set up by the administration, the Governor uh, O'Neill's administration over at the uh, State Armory on Broad Street in Hartford. Marla Romash has been on hand there throughout the entire duration and can bring us up to date. Marla, I wonder if uh, you have any new information. If you don't, could you at least recap for us? For those people who have been joining us, just uh, what kind of warnings are being issued and how many evacuations we've heard about. Marla, before you get started, I know the governor this morning said a limited state of emergency. Has that changed? No, it hasn't, Gail. In fact, what the governor did was sign the document he says was necessary to give him a legal standing. That is, he never declared a full state emergency, but filed papers with the secretary of the state's office that will, in fact, allow him to close down the state, close down state roads, and take whatever other steps he thinks are necessary should the weather become that bad and that treacherous that he thinks that's what he needs to do to protect the, the resident's safety. At this point, the, the most recent briefing we got was from the governor about an hour ago. He reported that there are 46 shelters open in 36 communities around the state, more than 132,000 homes, businesses without power. He also said he spoke personally, or his staff spoke, with representatives of towns all along the shoreline. That's the shoreline down near Greenwich and Fairfield and the eastern Connecticut shoreline, and said seemed at least to be pretty pleased with the way the evacuations were going and the way the emergency plans were being carried out. Again, he cautioned that it's still a little too early to tell. I think he's waiting for the storm to pass before he, he takes any credit for really taking care of the storm and, and dealing with it with the emergencies. There are 650 men and women National Guardsmen on duty, another 900 on standby. At this point, one of the most interesting pieces of news that I've gotten is the alert that's been issued at the Connecticut, excuse me, the Connecticut Yankee nuclear power plant. That's the first time an alert has ever been issued in Connecticut. Usually it means radioactivity has been released. This time they say it doesn't mean that. It was simply issued as a precaution because of the high winds that are going through that area. Gail, Pat? Okay, thank you very much, Marla. Uh, we do want to point out to people we have been losing some power. We've had power surges here uh, at Channel 3, and, of course, uh, the uh, possibility is there, of course, that many of you have been, uh, been losing your power on and off and getting it back as we have been. And we just saw in Marla's report there some of those power surges mm -hmm. that will actually uh, bring the picture in and out on your screen. If you do lose us on television, we are simulcasting right now on WDRC AM. Uh, 1360 in Hartford, and we invite you to uh, make certain you stay with us all afternoon long because this is a critical time, and we still have perhaps the worst of the storm in the greater Hartford area to go through. The heavy winds, of course, have been going through the shoreline area. We reported before sustained winds, uh, upper 60s down at the Bridgeport Air Station at, uh, at Stratford, um, the Sikorsky Airport down there, and wind gusts of 84 miles an hour along the Connecticut shoreline at that time. And, of course, up at Bradley Field, we have not yet gotten that kind of a sustained wind, although we have had wind gusts here in downtown Hartford that already are of hurricane force. The latest word from the governor's office is that we don't have a number on how many people have been evacuated. They said it's safe to say, though, there have been evacuations from many towns, just about every town in Connecticut, from Greenwich to Southington, but no word yet on exactly how many people have left their homes. Marla just told us that there are 46 shelters open in the state of Connecticut all around the state. Well, most of the uh, power outages that we have had have come, according to Northeast Utilities, along the shoreline from Branford out to Stonington. Northeast Utilities is reporting 125,000 customers. Now, again, a customer can be a business, it can be a home, so we're talking about far more than 125,000 people, but 125,000 customers without power for Northeast Utilities, 80,000 of those are in that particular hard-hit segment from Branford out east to the Rhode Island border out by Stonington. Here, do you know yet? Well, we are going to try and give you some live pictures from this area because this is really something to see. And we're working on that. And we're, we're going to stay around this area right now because this is where it's happening. Okay, Lucille, I, I have one further question. You mentioned that uh, report of a possible ho of a house being flattened in East Haven. Would that be from wind or from a giant tree coming down, or do you have any indication? I, I believe from wind, but I can't swear to it. This is uh, secondhand information. There are a lot of stories going around. I guess people are going to be talking of the storm of... Um, 
um, 85 the way they talked about the one of 38. We indeed have history on our hands right now. Are people still driving around the city down there? Are they still moving around on the roads? Not very much. There is some activity, but not too much. When we were out at Hammond Asset earlier today, the funny thing was they were getting a lot of people who wanted to go down to the beach to, to watch the waves. We were there for a while, but finally had to get out of there. It, the waves were coming up very high, but that wasn't so bad. It was the marshland that was encroaching over the road, and we would have been stuck out there. And were the other people leaving from that they area? They were not allowed on the, uh, the beach property. They were being barked. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Lucille. We look forward to your further reports uh, a bit later on today as we continue with our team coverage here on Channel 3 of Hurricane Gloria, which is making her way now up from New Haven to Hartford. Right now, we'll go back up to Marlene Schneider. She's in the newsroom now to bring us the latest on evacuations and closings. Marlene, what can you tell us? Well, Gail, um, if we get a picture here in just a moment, uh, I can tell you a lot of things at this point. Uh, maybe you can hear me before you can see me. Um, not just a matter of evacuations and closings, that sort of thing, but, you know, we've been talking about the power outages all over the state, 132,000 homes, and if you are able to listen to us on your television right now, you are some of the lucky ones around this state. Power will be going out uh, just as the storm moves in through, through Connecticut and on up through New England. Now, Northeast Utilities, of course, they work very hard to try to get that power restored just as quickly as possible. But in concern, out of concern for the safety of their repair crews, Northeast Utilities has called us. They have said that they are now pulling in some of their crews, telling them to take shelter until some of the worst weather has passed, and then to get on with the business of trying to restore power. So if you are listening to us on the radio right now on WDRC AM, uh, we, we urge patience. I guess that's what is going to be one of the messages of the day. Northeast Utilities doesn't want their crews to be hurt, uh, and they'll get uh, on with the business of making the repairs as soon as they can. I mentioned a little bit earlier, but uh, now that the eye of the hurricane is heading over, over the uh, city of Hartford and probably the central part of the state, there is a state of emergency, a full state of emergency in the city of Hartford. Mayor Thurman Milner has asked that people in Hartford not drive on city highways. It is right now illegal, much stronger than the kind of parking bans we have during the snowstorms. Unless uh, you are driving an emergency vehicle or you need to get to the hospital or you are having some sort of emergency, it is illegal right now to drive on the highways. In Middletown, as of 1 o'clock, the Central City District Firehouse and Police Department lost their power. They are on emergency power and dealing with that situation as best they can. The Vernon Center Medical, uh, Middle School is now the location of the shelter in Vernon. A uh, number for information on that in Vernon, give you a chance to get a pencil here, 875-3371, 875-3371, and that's the Vernon Center Middle School where they are now taking uh, people who are looking for shelter. And of course, a lot of people seeking shelter in the middle part of the state are not just worried about the winds and the rains. They are without power, and they are looking for a place where it's a little bit easier to ride out Hurricane Gloria. And Pat, a few, oh, about, an, I don't know how long ago it was, you were talking with Dr. Neil Frank of the National Hurricane Center in Miami. You asked him, or maybe the other fellow, about the kind of damage they have experienced to the south of us where the hurricane skirted up the coast. I do have one report for you. Uh, this is a dateline of Ocean City, Maryland. The famous boardwalk there buckled, and phone booths and, bench and benches were washed away as the uh, hurricane blew through that area earlier this morning. The storm uh, was then about 80 miles south of Atlantic City. And, of course, that's old. You know, we know right now that they are probably in the business of trying to clean up, which is something, according to the National Weather Service, we'll be doing uh, sometime after 3.30 or 4 when this storm has finally moved through our area. And that's about the latest information I have from the newsroom. That that indeed is quite uh, that indeed is mm -hmm. quite a report. Uh, Tom Walker, of course, was uh, was down there, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a report from him a bit earlier on, and we will uh, we will be updating that damage information, of course, as the afternoon progresses. Thanks, Marlene. One th one thing too, when we talk about the uh, patients that will be required, as Marlene mentions about the Northeast Utilities repair crews, the people from Southern New England Telephone Company tell us that their crews will be getting in to repair telephone lines after after the electrical company crews have come through. They will not endanger their phone company crews, so it will be uh, after you get your electric service back that you'll get your phone service back if indeed you were in that. Indeed is blasting her way right up the center of the state right now. The eye of the storm has already passed over New Haven and is headed for Hartford, the advance of the storm moving somewhere between 35 and 40 miles an hour. There is no underestimating this hurricane. We are just receiving reports that her wind speed is changing and her wind speed is changing very rapidly. Hilton Catterley can tell us more about that. He's sitting over now at Weather Watch 3. Hilton? All right. Uh, uh, Gail, I'm, I'm sitting here having a conversation with one of my weather watchers and getting some information with Bruce DePriest at the same time. Dave Spillane is on the phone. Dave, could you hang on just a moment? Sure. The, uh, 
heavy echoes that we have on our National Weather Service radar indicate uh, intense storm activity moving through central Connecticut at the present time. And Bruce DePriest has just reported to us twice within the last minute and a half uh, very strong wind gusts in downtown Hartford here at Channel 3. Uh, at uh, 1.30, we had a wind gust of 81 miles an hour. He walked back in a minute ago. He says it's up to 82 miles an hour. And uh, that uh, crescent-shaped band of uh, echoes that you see there in the center of your screen uh, represents what is left. Uh, it looks like at this time what is left of the eye of uh, hurricane, uh, the hurricane as it uh, comes in, Hurricane Gloria. So uh, uh, very heavy uh, weather here in central Connecticut. I have a weather watcher on the line, and um, I guess it never rains, but it pours when information begins coming and begins to come in. Dave Splain in West Haven. You still there, Dave? Sure am. All right. Uh, you had told us a minute ago that uh, you felt like uh, the worst of it had uh, passed by West Haven. Why is that? Uh, the barometer is uh, just bottomed out at 28.50. Uh, 28.50. 28 now, you called us earlier today during the noon hour, and uh, you had uh, what kind of pressure reading there? At that time, it was 29.10. Uh, 29.10, and it went all the way down to 28.50, and it was... A yeah, right now, it's just within the last uh, five minutes or so. It seems to have uh, stabilized. So you had falling barometric pressure until about the last five minutes, yeah. and uh, then it's uh, leveled off. Could you tell me how you've made out there personally? What's happened in your neighborhood? Well, just personally to my house, the siding in the last half an hour is starting to rip off. And I've been, uh, like, monitoring the, the police radio. Apparently there's trees and limbs and everything. It's, uh, I guess, just utter chaos right on, uh, right on the immediate shore. All right, I'm you're about a mile away. You're talking to us from West Haven right now. Right. What was the weather like during the past hour? Could you describe what happened uh, from a window uh, viewpoint? What did you see looking out the window? Uh, it seems like the winds of uh, in the last half an hour or so, just like they peaked. You know, it must have been gusts near 100 miles an hour. And like I said, even, you know, down toward the shore, they're probably even a little bit stronger. And uh, what's, what's happening now? What is very right bad? now, it's, uh, the rain seems to have let up, and uh, the winds are still you know, blowing very strong. Did you ever, at, in West Haven, did you ever have a lull or a calm there, or did it just continue to storm throughout nah, the just, afternoon? it just continued to storm. And All right, what's your wind direction right now, Dave? Uh, it seems to be from the east right now. You've still got an easterly wind direction right yeah. now. All right, huh? that, uh, that's a puzzling report, but I'll try to figure that one out. Uh, of course, these things don't uh, keep a uniform symmetrical shape as they move inland, but... We appreciate very much you staying in touch with us, Dave, and uh, thank you for keeping watch on our weather in southern New England. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll be in touch with you. Thank okay. you very much. Dave Spillane reporting uh, as a weather watcher from West Haven with uh, the, kind of, uh, in, in the kind of experience that many of us are sharing this afternoon here in southern New England. Pat, Gail. Okay, Hilton. Thank you, and thanks to Dave Spillane for keeping uh, watch over exactly what's happening down there. It's uh, remarkable to hear about these kinds of barometric pressures and the bottom dropping out the way it did. We saw a little bit earlier on some of those uh, meters mm -hmm. exactly how quickly that uh, barometer can drop. Um, we understand Marla Romash is standing by. Marla Romash is standing by. She's at the Armory, the, uh, gover the governor's headquarters. We have just received word that there have been some fatalities in this hurricane. Marla Romash is standing by with more on that. Marla? That's right, Gail and Pat. We just received word maybe 10 minutes ago from the governor's press secretary who said he had learned about a half hour ago of the first two fatalities. Very limited details are available. Both involved accidents, car, truck accidents. One was in Bar Campstead, no road given. The other was in Danbury on I-84. Again, these are probably the worst details of a storm that's been going on all day. The first two fatalities, accidents believed to have occurred roughly a half hour ago. We just learned of them now. Gail, Pat? The state has, have the DOT people been letting you know whether or not folks indeed are off the highways? We've been able to look out uh, from Channel 3 and see that people are still traveling on I-91 despite this incredible storm. The governor, as, as I've said, reported earlier, has refused to close the roads because he, think it's he thinks it's very important that people are able to get home from work, able to make emergency trips, although he has cautioned everyone to stay off the roads, to make only those trips that are absolutely critical. Again, the roads are open. We've had no feel here for what kind of traffic there's been, although we believe it's been light based on the statements we've heard from the state police and from other officials here at the emergency center. Any indication now, Marla, because of the fatalities, if maybe the governor is changing his mind about closing down some of the roads, or do you think he will still want to keep them open? I think he's trying to do everything he can to keep them open. We'll probably have another briefing from the governor later this afternoon. 
the feeling now, I think, is that he wants to leave them open. Some of the roads are, are closing anyway simply because of the weather, because of flooding problems and other things. He reported earlier that many of the roads along the shoreline were closed. But I think the major interstates he's trying to keep open. As we, uh, let me ask you this, Marla, do the people there at the, uh, at the emergency headquarters, are they aware of exactly uh, what is happening uh, along the shoreline? Are they getting damage reports coming in town by town, for example? Uh, are they posting any kind of a chart indicating the numbers of, uh, of uh, calls that they've had? I have to admit, the governor's staff seems to have a very good sense of what's going on around the state, but I have to admit they're sharing it with, sharing it with us only piecemeal, and that is every hour, every couple of hours when the governor does come out to brief us. You do get a sense, however, speaking to some of the commissioners and other people here at the emergency center, that they are getting calls regularly from a number of communities from around the state and have a pretty good sense of what's going on, especially in the shoreline areas. How about the military department? We heard earlier about people being uh, alerted, being there. Are they, in fact, moving out with any kind of equipment in the aftermath of the storm as it moves up the coast? Not yet from here. The governor, as you mentioned earlier, said there are 900 men and women on standby. They're also at armories in Norwich and Stratford. My guess is that they're moving out from those armories. Here in Hartford, we haven't seen a whole lot of activity, at least not from the National Guard. Okay. Thank you, Marla, very much. We'll be back to you shortly at the... Uh, State's command post at the State Armory, the Storm Emergency Center, where Governor O'Neill and his commissioners have been concentrating all of their efforts all day long and trying to keep a careful watch on the progress of the storm as it moves up through the state. And the storm is bringing us a lot of rain. Hilton has told us earlier that we can expect anywhere between 5 to 10 inches of rain. As you might expect, that is going to cause some flooding. Marlene Schneider is standing by in the newsroom now to bring us more information on that. Marlene? Well, Gail, we just got some updated information from the River Forecast Center in Bloomfield, and I would imagine some folks would like some of the day's first good news. Now, because Hurricane Gloria is moving so much more quickly than they had expected, she's now, I think, clocked at moving uh, northward about 35 to 40 miles an hour, which we, as we tracked her out over the Atlantic, she was like 15 to 20, so she has uh, speeded up quite a bit. Now, before we, uh, when we thought that storm would be moving slowly, the River Forecast Center uh, experts told us to expect four to six inches of rain from this storm. That would have been very bad news for many of the uh, smaller streams and, and creeks that would be expected to flood. But because she is moving so much faster and will be through our area so much more quickly, now the River Forecast Center is downgrading its prediction of rain. We may be only getting now about two to three inches. And that's very good news because at this point that does relieve the flooding uh, uh, concern quite a bit. Uh, the uh, forecast experts say there will not be nearly as much flooding and it probably will be only minor flooding from those smaller rivers and streams. We were really never too worried about the Connecticut River or some areas of the Farmington River and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but at this point, it's very good news now for, um, for the smaller streams. We also heard Governor William O'Neill talk about uh, the worry about dams when he had his uh, earlier news conference today when he addressed the state. And he said the Department of Environmental Protection was standing by and taking calls if you have any concerns about the dam in your area. It looks good right now, but I would suggest to people, if you're keeping an eye on dams in your area, if you think the water is rising uh, faster than it should or you're worried about it, to give the State Department of Environmental Protection uh, some, uh, give them a call on that and let them know what to expect. They maybe can help you. Right now, I uh, also want to pass along the uh, Mayor William McNamara of the City of New Britain now declared a state of emergency, much the same as we've had in Hartford since noon, that until 6 o'clock, the people of New Britain are told it is illegal to be driving on state highways uh, unless you have a uh, running an emergency vehicle or you have uh, an emergency and that's the latest information from the newsroom okay that's the city roads not the state highways right. is that correct right okay. the state all the state highways as we understand are still open uh, the governor as marla said has only got a limited state of emergency in effect at this point uh, in the central part of the state even though we are getting the eye of the storm it doesn't seem that the highways are oh, well, okay we're going to have to we have to interrupt okay. here marlene thank you very much we understand we have rd saul standing by from the new england news exchange and he is standing by live right now in uh, in stanford and he can give us the latest rd good afternoon you've uh, been through apparently the brunt of it Good afternoon, Dale and Pat, and hello to you in the Hartford area from the eye, the center of Hurricane Gloria. We are on Shiphand Point overlooking Long Island Sound uh, from an office complex, and for the last 45 minutes or so, we have been in the middle of Hurricane Gloria, the eye. Uh, a few minutes ago, the sky was blue in patches, the clouds were puffy white, the rain had stopped, the wind was still gusty, and now we are approaching the second half of the storm. The wind is beginning to pick up again, and if you can see across the horizon here, beyond the sailboats, over to Long Island, that bank of clouds moving this way is the other side of the storm. 
We've been here since yesterday and have steadily watched the surf grow, have watched people in this yacht basin uh, where this office complex is located, tie down their boats, hoping against hope that they are going to be able to withstand the, the storm surge, the wind, and the heavy rain. A bit earlier this afternoon, I was over on the windward side of Shippan Point. The breakers were big. The raindrops were like being hit by stones. They were being driven by the rain with such force. Uh, difficult to work with television gear in that uh, kind of environment. Uh, we got one shot, I think, of the water, and that was it before we had to come back and dry things out. All over Shippan Point here in Stamford, trees are down, and that, of course, means that power lines are down. A lot of power is out, and a lot of people in these shoreline homes have refused to evacuate. There has been no ordered evacuation, according to what we have understood here in Stamford at this point, but police cars have been cruising low-lying neighborhoods, advising people to leave. Those police cruisers have been followed by school buses, offering to take people to any of six... Okay, obviously we are having uh, difficulty and we have uh, just lost the remainder of R.D.'s uh, report right there. We certainly get the essence of it. He's standing there in the eye of the storm right now and apparently that, that storm eye must be uh, broader than we had anticipated and perhaps than we had seen a bit earlier on. Maybe we can clarify that by going to Bruce DePriest now over in the Weather Center. Bruce, uh, I don't know if you could hear what R.D. was saying there, but he's mm -hmm. talking, he was watching that second wall. I certainly can't doubt that picture. It was very real. No, uh, we have information that confirms what R.D. Saul was reporting just a little while ago. I have a, a message out of the uh, Weather Service office in Bridgeport, Connecticut, saying that the eye of Hurricane Gloria crossed over southwestern Connecticut, and it says a blue sky was reported just to the west of the uh, Weather Service office at Bridgeport, and that uh, a low pressure of 28.5 inches occurred at 1.15 this afternoon. Winds have shifted around to the south at uh, speeds of 70 miles an hour gusting to 90, which means that uh, Bridgeport is indeed on the uh, eastern side of the eye of Hurricane Gloria. And it says, remember, this is not the end. Uh, skies will cloud over again shortly. Winds will be just as strong from the opposite direction, from the west. And uh, they also go on to say that portions of the Lordship area in Stratford have been flooded. Most of the coastal population has been evacuated to safer areas, and several aircraft have been damaged at the airport. So evidently, the uh, eye of Hurricane Gloria has crossed over southwestern Connecticut to Little Sunshine Report. If we look at our color graphics, display. We uh, do show you exactly where the eye uh, went over. We have a little uh, sunshine symbol showing just to the west of the Bridgeport uh, Weather Service office and uh, RD was in Stamford, Connecticut saying that the sun and blue sky was visible there. So it looks like a rather broad eye passing right over the notch, the southwestern notch of Connecticut and that uh, storm center continues to move uh, toward the uh, north northeast at a fairly rapid pace. Uh, now live National Weather Service radar shows that uh, rain along the shoreline may have let up. We don't know if that's attenuation due to the heavier echoes over inland areas, but nonetheless, it looks like the eye is now over inland areas over southwestern Connecticut moving northward. Radar does show some very heavy squalls over interior sections of Connecticut and Massachusetts, and these will continue over the area for the next hour or two. Now, uh, once the uh, storm center of Gloria moves by to our north, which would be uh, later on this afternoon, conditions will be improving quite a bit. But in the meantime, over interior sections, uh, we'll have uh, heavy rain squalls, the potential for some tornado activity. A tornado watch is in effect. And uh, right now along the shoreline, the winds will be shifting around to the west as the eye of Hurricane Gloria progresses northward. Pat and Gail? Bruce, you know, when I hear you use the words blue skies, it sounds very encouraging. But listening to your message, that's not something that we should be encouraged about just because the skies are blue. It's still a very dangerous situation, isn't it? Exactly. Uh, the blue sky is the dead center, the bullseye of the hurricane. And what happens is the uh, winds are circulating at a very rapid pace right around that eye. So just before the eye moves into an area, you're getting a very strong winds from the east. The eye passes overhead. It's, uh, the winds could go to calm, and you could see uh, lots of blue sky and lots of sunshine. But once the eye gets north of the area, then you're on the other side of that low, and winds uh, come around right from the west once again at hurricane force. So uh, shoreline areas will be seeing a uh, hurricane force winds from the west before too long. Here in the Hartford area, winds are still from the east. So it appears as though the uh, hurricane center is somewhere between the uh, southwestern portion of the state and central portions of Connecticut right now. But again, it is uh, moving very rapidly. Then we seem, the Bruce, we, we, we seem to have solved that mystery with Dave Spillane's report out of West Haven before, before when he had the east easterly wind still right uh, so apparently then what Lucille was indicating to us about the about the eye being apparently over New Haven which we were seeing on the radar at least uh, earlier we thought that was apparently that eye actually was further to our west and that I would assume is going to increase the total damage from this storm since we have the 
punishing winds on the western or the eastern side of the center, uh, hitting more of a, the Connecticut coastline than we originally thought. Is that is that a fair thing? I think that's a fair thing to say, Pat, because again, the strongest winds are on the uh, eastern side of the hurricane, not only due to the circulation around the storm, but the forward speed. That intends to increase the uh, impact of the hurricane on the eastern side of it. We did get faked out uh, about an hour ago. It looked as though the storm center was approaching New Haven, but that may have been to some attenuation, what we call on the radar screen, which means that uh, heavy rain echoes over interior sections may not have allowed us to see into the storm eye as well as we would have liked to. So uh, maybe to a certain deg degree we got faked out, and uh, we did. The storm center passed right over the southwestern portion of the state. In other words, that dark par part that we were seeing on the radar screen meant we just couldn't get through the rain. Exactly. That uh, rain could be blocking the uh, beam from actually going too far out into the storm center. It is a process of what we call attenuation. Okay. Incredible power. And here on yeah. Channel 3, those of you who have joined us via transistor radio, perhaps, on WDRC Radio AM 1360 out of Hartford. Uh, we are, in fact, broadcasting continually throughout the afternoon. We've been bringing you all of the latest information on the monstrous storm called Hurricane Gloria that slammed ashore this morning and we have been tracking it we've been on the air live uh, from all over the state throughout the day to bring you the latest information we can and Gail, i think maybe if we could just uh, touch on some of the immediate storm tips and just mm -hmm. tell folks once again live wires are down don't touch them tree limbs are down and we've caused uh, we, we've heard of uh, the causing a great deal of damage around the state and it's extremely important to us right now to uh, pass along that information to you to stay inside to stay secure and we'll bring you up to date with the latest that we can on the uh, weather conditions. You should also know that because the storm has gotten so bad, Northeast Utilities and the telephone company have pulled their crews off the streets until the worst is over. But Hilton Catterley is standing by now. He's got a weather watcher on the phone right now. Hilton, what can you tell us? We've got a really well-placed weather watcher on the line. He's in Bark Hampstead, Carl Nobelski. Carl, I've talked to you a good many times on the phone. We've never uh, gone on the air before. I uh, want to thank you for calling us. Uh, you were describing just a minute ago a kind of change in the weather there in western Connecticut and Bark Hampstead. Uh, describe it for me, please. That's correct, Hilton. Uh, we've noticed that our wind speeds have uh, dropped considerably. Uh, we don't know exactly where the eye of the storm is presently, but we do know that our winds have uh, subsided uh, quite a bit. All right, Carl, I know that you are uh, without power so that you have not been able to watch television, and I'll share with you the fact that the eye moved inland over uh, uh, Bridgeport, just to the west of Bridgeport, and is moving northward, and your report of a drop in the winds and a brightening of the sky uh, uh, indicates that uh, the eye is, uh, is passing through western Connecticut at this time. Tell me what the weather's been like uh, during the uh, early afternoon hours there in uh, northwestern Connecticut. Okay, it has been quite windy. We have been able to uh, monitor Channel 3, uh, we are operating under generator power at our location here and uh, keeping in touch with our various ham radio operators uh, uh, located at the various firehouses and also at uh, Bark Hampstead Town Hall uh, just to make sure that we can maintain communication should telephone service go out. Uh, the weather has been quite windy, quite a bit of rain. Our present rainfall amount is three point power lines that have come down. Um, we've had a few uh, fire calls that have gone out, uh, this type of thing, and we're trying to relay those to the proper uh, authorities so that they can uh, uh, do what has to be done. All right. Any specific spots of damage that uh, come to mind right now? Uh, I know that they are repairing some lines on uh, Route 44. This was a relay from one of our uh, ham radio operators. And in New Hartford, there were a couple of uh, down tree limbs and trees that have... Uh, kept power out in that Okay, way. thank you, Carl. We have another report standing by, so I'll thank you for your report from uh, uh, what promises, what appears to be a lull in the storm right now, and Pat, back to you and Gail. Thank, thank you, Carl. You. Thank you, Hilton. Thank you, Mr. Nobelski. Uh, we are rushing along now because we have some satellite time back to the National Hurricane Center, and we've got Bob Sheets standing by again. Bob, we understand the eye of the storm from what we now understand. We thought earlier we were, well, we're going to lose him now. We, uh, we're going to ask him if he can uh, bring us up to date. If we can reestablish contact with that, we will try to uh, go back to Bob Sheets at the National Hurricane Center. But and in of the course, meantime. in the, with the, uh, the eye of the storm, as we're indicating right now, not over the New Haven area, but over to the west of Bridgeport, which of course indicates that those damaging, damaging and punishing winds that are actually ramming into the coast of Connecticut are going to be hitting everything from 
uh, Bridgeport on out to the east and have, in fact, uh, done some of their most uh, severe destruction out there. We keep um, losing, losing some of power our power here. here in the studio, and uh, we understand many of you are going to be losing yours at home and have already lost it. Hope you uh, will stay with us on DRC Radio 1360. Let's go back up to the newsroom now. Marlene Schneider is standing by while we're trying to get Bob Sheets back in Miami. Marlene Schneider is up in the newsroom with more information. Marlene? Well, I'm not as well informed as from Bob Sheets is, but I'll be his substitute till we get that satellite back. I do have some information that came in from Connecticut State Police. It is a little bit alarming to me because it is meant for truckers. I don't know how we get this information to them, but for those of you listening, it gives you an idea of what driving conditions are. Now, this is the first word we've had on an interstate highway. Troop A in Southbury is requesting that truckers traveling on I-80 from exit 27 to exit 1 on the New York State border pull over and wait out the storm not to be traveling on the highway that driving conditions at this stage stage with the rain and the winds are the driving conditions are just too hazardous for those truckers to uh, to be pulling trying to, to drive through it we had early reports today about a truck blown off the Tappan Zee bridge in New York um, the driver was rescued but they weren't positive that it had anything to do with the winds or the rains but that would probably be a pretty good guess we also have had several phone calls from people who have television on cable. Now, this is for those of you still watching us who haven't lost their power yet. If your cable company goes out, let me make a suggestion that you, what you do is disconnect the cable from the back of your television set and turn it back on to the, to the dials, how you used to use it before cable. Get us on channel three. On, on many cables, we come in on the number two. So what I would suggest to you right now is that if, you, if you're going to worry about losing your cable, if it goes out, you are not without your television. As long as you have your power, just disconnect the cable. Uh, in Plainfield, we did have a call uh, at, from someone at 145. They said they had lost all power in that town of Plain, Plainfield and that there were small fires burning from the downed electrical wires despite the rain. They are dealing with that. We hope it is not too serious. We told you about the state of emergencies, not only in Hartford and New Britain. We now have one in Middletown where the mayor, Sebastian Garofalo, has declared a state of emergency. He wants every car off city, city streets except emergency vehicles, and they're getting very strict down there. They say that if you are on the roads and Middletown police see you, they will stop you and you will be subject to arrest. The uh, public works crews will be... Um, taking shelter during the height of the storm as and as we heard about northeast utility crews uh, towns and, and utilities and cities very much worried about their their workers they want to restore service just as quickly as possible but at this stage of the game they certainly don't want to have any of their crews in danger we have I have just been handed uh, uh, this word that the Massachusetts turnpike has been closed the Mass Pike is closed right now, so if you thought you were going to be heading to Boston, don't even think about it right now because driving conditions are too hazardous between the uh, heavy winds and the rain. Uh, I did get a call from someone in the Bristol area, Alicia Horner. She said that uh, we know that the eye of the storm hasn't probably gotten that far north yet, but uh, she said they had the winds dying down. She lives um, in the Bristol Plaza area off Route 6. She says the power's been going off and on, but at this stage, she does still have power that the winds have been, had uh, died down for a while and are picking up again. And she wondered if she was having the eye of the hurricane. We can't tell her yet. But, but what is very common in hurricanes, I've been through a few of them when I lived in Miami, is that you're going to get these strong gusts. And just because it dies down for a little while is no indication that it is over. And I guess that's about the latest information we have. I guess there are some uh, hazardous driving conditions along the New York uh, border, Connecticut-New York border for I-84. So that's just an indication that if you think you're going to be going out this afternoon, if, if there's any kind of a call to be made, please stay home. I think all the emergency crews would like it best if there's no one on the highway to have to worry about. Marlene, let's, uh, we can tell that lady that she's not in the eye of the storm right now. We understand the eye is just about over Middlebury, Middlebury. right now. I didn't think she w it had gone that far north, and I didn't want her to think she had a few moments to go out there and, and, and you know, no kind of look around. Mm -hmm. So no I way. be very careful. We, we warn people that the eye of the storm is nothing to go out in either. Yeah, and the, and the other point that, uh, that I'd like to comment on, you mentioned the, the I-84 out toward mm -hmm. western Connecticut. Mm -hmm. That apparently, though, is the t place where they're going to be getting those winds, uh, the winds in the wall as they say, the, the toughest winds of the entire hurricane, and uh, indeed, that's great advice. Thank you very much well, for that Well, if, if we have heard already about state police talking about the truckers not driving, we might be seeing that that highway closed down for a portion of, t uh, portion of time, but although that has not happened officially yet. Right. Okay. Up to this point, Governor O'Neill seems to be reluctant to close the roads, but maybe he will change his mind now. Maybe, well, maybe a very good move, uh, because they are still trying to move some of those emergency vehicles and get some of these people through. Uh, we'll keep you up to date as the information comes in the news. Okay, room. indeed, and we will be having further updates as, uh, as we progress, we'll take a short break right now and be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us, please. 
Sweet Life household products meet the same high standards of quality as our food merchandise, and we are proud to announce they, too, have the good housekeeping seal. There's Sweet Life bleach, heavy-duty liquid detergent, fabric softener, and dishwashing detergent. We also give you super soft toilet tissue and facial tissue, as well as strong absorbent paper towels. They've all earned the good housekeeping seal, and we're sure that you'll give them your wholehearted approval. Look for the Sweet Life quality products at your Sweet Life supplied independent supermarkets. Coverage of Hurricane Gloria. The storm has come ashore today. And she's now moving her way through the western part, the eye of the storm, through the western part of Connecticut with damaging winds to the east, all the way from uh, Bridgeport out to Stonington. Heavy winds have been gusting into the shoreline of Connecticut. We've had wind gusts along the shoreline unofficially at 100 miles an hour and officially here in Hartford at better than 80 miles an hour. And of course, this has not been a usual day. No, this has not been the day to go to work, or if you did go to work, you quickly found out, I'm sure, that it was time to turn around and go right back home. Jim Bicevich is joining us now with more on the business aspect of this day. Jim, you, you, you've been talking to the insurance companies, I know, both from the standpoint of when they shut down themselves and now about how they're handling the disaster themselves. Did some of these fellows, uh, I, I don't want you to make the judgment, but have they made a mistake by trying to get their people in this morning? Did they really not count on the storm being as strong as it was themselves? No, I think what they didn't count on was the storm moving as quickly up the coast as they thought it, uh, as it, as it did. Uh, they thought that they would have some time to get some work done this morning and the storm would hit later on in the afternoon. They did not, I don't think most people around here understand how ferocious a hurricane can be before it even gets to, uh, to the area. And as it turns out, it was probably a good idea that uh, they did not, uh, they did let people go early because if you've been out on the streets and uh, the streets are just in, in not very good shape at all. Some businesses had to stay open, uh, some businesses were closed. The insurance companies shut down, but not everybody, as you'll see. The time reads 927, but it just as easily could have read 527. The morning was dark as any evening, and the streets filled with people heading home almost as soon as they had arrived. Hartford's banks and insurance companies, the city's biggest employers, decided to shut down early. Did that frighten you a little? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm frightened. The wind's picking up. It's nerve-wracking. And they left it up to everybody's discretion. I think part of that is that it's difficult for people to work. They're just, nobody was doing anything anyway. This is a, a worst case scenario. Uh, Don Friedman, who heads up the Traveler's Research, says they shut down with good reason. He's already plotted a new course for the storm, already has begun to project storm damage. His computer program showing New London and New Haven suffering the worst. What's your estimate in terms of damage now for southern New England? Uh, still in terms of billions of dollars, it's very difficult to have a specific number because of this high, very, very strong sensitivity of the track of the storm relative to the distribution of properties, exposed properties. Now again, these are just projections and just computer, computer estimates, but they're estimating hundreds of millions of dollars in damage just between New London and New Haven. That is primarily because they estimated that the, the, uh, most, the fiercest part of the storm, the eastern part to the eye, would be where those particular cities would be hit and they would sustain the most damage. So uh, again, it's just a projection, but the computer will know more by uh, later on this evening and by early tomorrow morning. We'll also know if people uh, took all those precautions that we've been talking about for the past couple of days. A lot of people uh, can save a great deal of financial loss by having done some of those things. Absolutely, you can save an awful lot that way. We were talking earlier about filing claims. If you have some heavy damage, should you wait or okay, have you I set have, up a procedure for that? Uh, I have more information on that, although it's awfully tough to get through because there are very few people in the offices, so you're hunting people down in their various homes. What I understand at this particular moment is that Aetna Life and Casualty is setting up an emergency claim center at this moment, although I haven't been able to uh, definitely confirm that it is being set up at this moment. It is either being set up or will be set up shortly. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, we, can, we can handle the information, get that out as soon as we get that, too. Okay, and also we understand that the Hartford Group and also uh, Cigna will also be setting up claims, emergency claim centers also in Hartford to handle the emergency claims. These would be at some central that. location as opposed to your local insurance agent uh, office. That's right. These will be uh, Aetna people, Cigna people, Hartford people, uh, who are travelers people who will be going out into the field, actual company company representatives to handle them as quickly as they can handle these claims. Do you know, Jim, if they still have adjusters out there on the road? I know earlier today we thought that they might, act, they might have the adjusters right out there on the spot looking at policyholders' addresses. 
Do you know if they're doing that? No, no one's no one is outside at this okay. particular moment. Everybody is inside. And, <laughs> yeah, and they I will know, wait. I thought that's strange earlier. As a matter of fact, I was told by a spokesperson for Aetna Life and Casualty that, that they will wait two hours after the eye passes before they will even venture out. So these are the insurance people who have been through this before, mm -hmm. and they are going to wait two hours after the eye passes before they will go out. When All you right. came in and sat down, you said, pretty spooky. It is. It's pretty bad out there, I, I will say that. Okay. Well, we continue to urge people. Thank you, Jim Weisswitz. We urge people to stay inside because, uh, indeed, uh, it is uh, that frightening time of the storm where we have the eye of the storm apparently moving up right now through the western portion of the state. We have the heaviest sustained winds battering into the uh, central and eastern port portions of Connecticut right now, and we have had uh, enormous wind gusts. We've had winds of over 80 miles an hour. Here in the Hartford area, winds at, uh, unofficially at least at 100 miles an hour along the shoreline. In and Hartford, over 80 miles an hour. Yes, and we've had the conflicting reports about uh, rainfall amounts. Let's go back to Bruce DePriest. He's over in the Weather Center. And Bruce, uh, earlier we were talking about 5 to 10 inches of rain from this storm. Marlene told us a short time ago that uh, someone, I believe, at the River Forecast Center was saying we might not get that much uh, water for out of this storm. Uh, what's your view and what can you tell us? We've had uh, some rainfall amounts, Pat and Gail. Uh, for example, Dave Perrin in uh, Massachusetts and Chester reported three inches of rain. We may not get as much as earlier thought because the storm center is accelerating toward the northeast, moving very rapidly. So if it doesn't stick around that long, we cannot get as much rainfall. But uh, what does fall will come down in a fury for a uh, rather brief period of time. Now, we've had uh, some conflicting reports as to where the eye is. We thought that uh, earlier this afternoon the eye was crossing uh, around New Haven, but now we've had reports over the southwestern part of the state and over western portions of Connecticut of sunshine in, in many towns and uh, very recent reports. Uh, sunshine reported in Ansonia, Connecticut, and Oxford, and Shelton. The one in Shelton reported just about five minutes ago. So the storm appears to be uh, a very broad center at the present time, moving up on the western side of the state. So anybody from Hartford westward could see some sunshine as the storm continues its northward track on through the afternoon hours. Now we've also had some reports uh, that uh, Channel 22 and Channel 40 are now out. Uh, someone uh, evidently called in saying that they can only see Channel 3 right now at the present time. Now, I mentioned that uh, Dave Parrott from Chester, Massachusetts reported three inches of rain since this morning. His report, uh, very recent. Uh, Dave uh, said he had wind gusts to 50 or 65 miles an hour, increasing steadily. And in the southern uh, Berkshire area, trees and wires are down. So evidently, there is some damage up that way. And, uh, We'll continue to get to some reports from our weather watches as the afternoon goes on. But again, evidently, the eye is over the western port of the state, the portion of the state moving northward. So anywhere from the uh, Hartford area westward could see some sunshine in the next uh, hour or so as the storm continues its northward course. What, what time did the uh, landfall uh, report come in? What time was the sun actually seen down in the Stamford area and the Bridgeport area? According to the National Weather Service office at Bridgeport, they saw some sunshine and a, a minimum pressure reading at about 1.15 this afternoon. So right now we'll take that as the time that the uh, storm, storm system did cross the Connecticut shoreline. Okay, and from here on in we still have uh, many, many heavy hours left ahead of us, at least two or three very heavy and serious hours of weather in the, in the area. Yes. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, Pat mentioned, I mean, Bruce just mentioned, Pat, that Channel two, 22 and Channel 42 Springfield stations have been knocked off the air. It's a good time to remind you about what's going on with us. We are being simulcast right now by WDRC Radio, which is 1360 on your AM dial. Ginny Musanti has been out and uh, traveling about in the greater Hartford area, and uh, she's joining us now, just back in, and uh, brings us some of the uh, pictures and scenes and impressions, personal impressions of what you've been running through. Jim? My personal impression was very strong for those of us who remember the tornado five years ago. The scene right now in Greater Hartford is very similar to the scene that we saw right before the tornado struck. Now, we didn't see any real serious damage, but what we did see was very heavy wind, a lot of, a lot of debris blocking the road. It was impossible to travel even for a minute without running into some kind of tree. Now, this, there's a tree down across Bloomfield Avenue. It was a big tree. It was uprooted. It hit the power lines, knocking out power to that area. There are live wires just about everywhere. So if you see those kind of wires, steer clear. If the power is out, just stay home and wait. Now, this tree that you see right here that's down, that literally fell right in front of our car just as we were driving down. We did not capture it on camera. We were driving at the time. But within about five minutes, the road crews were there, the folks from the DPW. They cleared away the road. Utility trucks arrived shortly thereafter. There's the DPW crew arriving right now. They just bulldozed that tree out of the way. And again, Blue Hills Avenue did reopen. We traveled down further to Bloomfield. It was exactly the same scene. Three or four large trees down, blocking the road. 
utility crews coming right out and clearing the roadway. Now, this all happened around 12.30, quarter of one. I think that all the traffic you see could be a lot of the people who are heading home from work, those people who did go in this morning. As we traveled throughout the city, mostly through the Asylum Hill and North Ends of Hartford, there were a number of people on the street, and that was a real dangerous situation. The police were going down. The police were saying, this is an emergency situation. Get off the streets. In addition to the trees being down, there's a lot of flying debris, a lot of glass, a lot of things like um, billboards, pieces of billboards. This huge tree was literally uprooted and then thrown down on a house. Now, the house was a solid brick structure. It looks to be OK. but. But again, it's, it's that kind of wind, very, very powerful wind. It goes, it's been going from east to west, from what I could tell. Now, again, a lot of the debris is flying. Uh, parts of billboards were just sweeping across the sky. We saw a gutter fly off a house. The police were going down the street telling people to take cover, to get inside. As we continue to watch the pictures, let me ask you, uh, Ginny, you mentioned the uh, people out on the street. Are we primarily dealing with the question of children? We know the schools, of course, were canceled all over. The governor had a very strong urging today asking the children to stay inside, but what about, are the kids out on the streets, basically? Well, it's older kids, uh, people like 16, 18 years mm -hmm. old. I saw one mother with her daughter, a, a daughter around nine years old, a young woman walking her daughter. I don't know where they were going. Mm -hmm. But again, the police were telling people, get inside, take cover. It's not so much that the wind's going to blow you over, but anything, like buildings, parts of buildings, siding is coming the right off and just lines, sailing right through the air. And of course, the power lines, and with the trees just falling, literally, you don't know which one's going to fall, if it's going to fall on you. The best advice, indeed, is to stay indoors. Well, even Looking something like a trash can out there can become a projectile. And, uh, and, and there are many water. trash cans. Apparently, this must be pickup day in Bloomfield, because a lot of people put their trash out. And believe it or not, the cans are just rolling all over the place. Looking at your video, since... Okay. Thank you, Ginny. We will be watching for further reports. And, uh, and I'm going to head back out, and uh, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully the storm will veer off or something, and it won't get worse. No, well, we didn't see anything it has not real serious at, at this point, but indeed it could be if people don't heed the warnings and stand Yeah, time. indeed. We're be still careful careful out there. there. Thank you, Thanks, Ginny. Thanks, I will. And just again, uh, for those of you who are joining us, the center of the storm itself moving northward now. He's issuing an advisory. He is asking people, he is requesting people that if you don't have to be on the highway, don't do it. As we saw from those pictures in Hartford, emergency crews need to be able to get to those streets, need to be able to move those fallen trees and power lines, get them out of the way to protect everyone. So it's really for everyone's protection. It isn't that they don't want you to go out, that they want to, you know, try to issue demands and tell you what to do, but it is good advice for your own safety. Um, at this point, we also have a toll-free number if you need, feel at this day, uh, state, you need to make an emergency insurance claim. There is now here a toll-free nationwide number for any emergency insurance claims, 1-800-421-3535. Again, that number, 1-800, that's a toll-free number, 421-3535. And I guess at this point, Pat and Gail, that the worst thing that we've been able to tell you from up here is that it is now a half million homes that are without power, and hopefully they have transistor radios so that they can listen to a simulcast on WDRC and sort of keep up to date because it would be more than just the normal expression of being in the dark, of not knowing where the storm is. That would be a very frightening experience to, to lose contact with uh, our weather experts and that kind of information. Well, of course, uh, you know, when we talk about those half million customers, as you indicate, Marlene, we're really talking the old rule of thumb is about two and a half to three right. people. Right, so we know it's going to be a lot more people than that's when we talk homes. Right. Half the state uh, right now in the dark, and uh, and that's why those uh, shelters are there and uh, right. people can go. The phone service, the phone company is saying that at this point they're not having as big a problem as the utility companies are having. They are, of course, as we've been saying throughout the day, asking that you not use the phone to call your folks down the road or even even if you're concerned about relatives, that at, at this point they're asking that unless it's a real important call, don't make it. Don't tie up the lines. But they are not reporting the same kinds of problems that United Illuminating and Northeast Utilities are reporting. The power lines are just down everywhere. I wonder if we can check with that question. You mentioned the nationwide insurance. Is mm -hmm. that is that nationwide insurance, nationwide the company? Is that their 1-800 number, or is that a, a national line. It looks like from your eyes, I think maybe we better check on that. <laughs> uh, you got me on that one. I was told that it was a nationwide emergency hotline, emergency toll-free number to call in. I don't know whether it deals strictly with nationwide insurance. I'll find okay, that out we, and we get check on back that. to you on the <laughs> That's next great. One. Okay, thank you, Marlene. Thanks, Marlene. Uh, we continue our coverage here on Eyewitness News team coverage. Uh, Hurricane Gloria, which came ashore at about quarter after one today, continues to work her way up through the western part of the state. And again, if you can just picture that map, that right-hand side of the storm is the one that gets the counterclockwise brunt of the heavy winds. 
And of course, uh, the damage has been severe all along the shoreline. We have reporters out in the field, and we are going to continue to bring you complete coverage as the day proceeds. You know, when we last talked to the people at the Hurricane Center in Miami, they were saying, okay, you're going to get through this stuff, and by tomorrow, things will be okay. And you would think, with that kind of thinking, that if there are sports things planned, that it will be okay to attend a sports game. Wrong. <laughs> Very wrong. Dave Smith joins us once again, and he can bring us up to date on some of the cancellations that have uh, occurred because of this, and uh, indeed a very serious situation, and uh, the best thing of all to do is to make sure that folks are staying home and not trying to get out on the road or even travel to get to a game that's coming up the next day. Right, Pat. In fact, we've got to start first with the game that was scheduled for tonight. The Whalers had a preseason game scheduled at the Hartford Civic Center with the Washington Capitals. That game will be played Monday night, so save your tickets, have a nice weekend, and come to the, if you can, cleaning up after this mess, then come to the Hartford Civic Center Monday night, and the Whalers will play that game against the Washington Capitals at 7.30. The UConn-Yale game, scheduled for tomorrow at the Yale Bowl, will be played Sunday at 1.30. Trinity was to go up and play Bates in Maine. They were to travel today for tomorrow's game. They are not, you can't ask anybody to travel that far today. They will travel tomorrow and play that game Sunday, so if you were going to go up and see that game. It will be played Sunday. The Wesleyan at Middleton, uh, Fiddlebury game in Vermont will be played Sunday at 1.30 in the afternoon. We haven't heard from any of the high, school, uh, that are high schools that are hosting games tomorrow. Uh, it's a lot easier for kids to get to that game, to get the buses through tomorrow morning. I assume that some will be played because we're supposed to have nice weather tomorrow. Then again, best check. There is a host of games being played tomorrow. Some will, I guess, be uh, played Sunday afternoon and some as late as Monday. This actually, uh, the storm itself posed the problem yesterday. I know the University of Connecticut team normally on a, a Yale weekend goes down the day before. And down, and right, they the would uh, take a motel and be out away from stores like a regular road trip, which it is a road game for them. Mm -hmm. They will do that tomorrow, I assume, and then Sunday at 1.30, uh, play that game at the Yale Bowl. Well, I would think, David, you know, after dealing with this hurricane that people will look forward to a game. They're worried about filling up the Yale Bowl. Maybe they'll have a bigger crowd. Maybe they'll time. have a bigger crowd this time with nice weather, and it's not that much of an imposition on the people around the state who are going because That's true. it's not that far away from anybody in New Haven. That's okay. very true. Thank you, Dave, very much for the update. And we, of course, uh, want to remind you of some other things that are being canceled. Uh, everything. How about that? We can put our finger on it yeah. right there. Yeah. Uh, the lotto drawing that is normally held on Friday evenings in the state of Connecticut has been delayed, so you will not become an instant millionaire tonight. I mean, if you were counting on that, that will not happen, or at least it will not happen with the Connecticut lotto game. That's I don't right. So there's no need to go rushing out to buy your tickets <laughs> to think, well, maybe this will be my lucky night. It is not going to be no lotto game tonight. Okay. Hilton Catterley standing by right now. Weather Watch 3 can bring us the very latest update on Hurricane Gloria. Hilton? Pat, we've had a few puzzling reports about sunshine and where it was sunny and where the winds were calming down, and so we've uh, gotten some data in, and maybe we can sort it out a bit. First of all, one of the problems is really power hits, and it's been difficult to get data in the last few, uh, few hours, but in any event, here's the radar showing you where the precipitation shield is now and where it isn't. You notice to the south of us, especially over southwestern Connecticut and the southeastern New York state now, uh, there's not a lot of precipitation being detected by radar, and in fact, the heaviest uh, bands of precipitation now are along the uh, Berkshires, uh, north and south, through western Massachusetts. That's where the heaviest precipitation echoes are at the present time. Let's look at a map we put together. It's a little bit primitive, but it, I think it tells a story. Uh, Jim McDonald did some plotting of, uh, of the one o'clock wind conditions, and you can see from looking at wind directions at various stations, exactly at one o'clock this afternoon, how they were swirling around the western part of the state. For example, Bridgeport had uh, due south winds. We had southeast winds in Hartford. We had uh, mostly southeast to easterly winds uh, at Bradley International Airport, and northerly winds over at Poughkeepsie, and on Long Island we had strong westerly winds. I'm going to change these graphics for a minute, and I want to show you uh, the latest uh, satellite photo that we have, because it, it also indicates that we have rapid clearing coming to our south. Satellite photo that is just into the weather watch uh, indicates a lot of clear skies coming up, and it also indicates that the, we had this little uh, clear patch just over the southwest corner of Connecticut and uh, New York State. So we've got thinner clouds to our south. The darkest, heaviest clouds from the hurricane have now passed into northern New England at this hour. So that kind of clears up a little bit. What, the, what we're saying is we have some winds down here to the south of the storm, but the heaviest precipitation, the heaviest precipitation right now is, uh, is moving to the north of us. Take a look at North Carolina sense. and Virginia down there. Isn't that something? They, it, this area yesterday was uh, just under a, uh, you know, a real dark cloud cover. I'm going to get rid of this one little communications plug in my ear. We had some real dark clouds over, um, uh, over 
uh, North Carolina and Virginia uh, up until uh, early this morning, and things have cleared out rapidly. And as this storm lifts to the north, uh, we should see really rapidly improving weather in Connecticut and later this evening in Massachusetts. So. Right does that trip. make does that help put things absolutely in the I, 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 you know so. we, we were talking Very before so. because we had the weather watcher giving us the indication and the wind and he said was coming out of the east and we said no wait a minute yeah. it can't be what? coming out of but absolutely and uh, showing the value of having those people out in the field and and hilton's whole crew that has been working throughout the night and through the day uh, to keep an eye on this storm and be able to keep an eye to be able to spot that eye of the storm as it came ashore because it is so critically important and to the people in western connecticut who are listening to us right now or watching us Please recognize that as, that as that center moves through and that calm moves through, you're about to get socked again, and it won't build up. It'll happen all of a sudden as you get that second wall of the storm coming through, and it will be just as brutal as it was a few minutes prior to the skies opening up, only it will be coming from the other direction, as Hilton indicated with that uh, graphic display. But you know what I find very encouraging about the pictures that Hilton just showed us, Virginia, North Carolina, how clear they were. The people in the Hurricane Center in Florida keep saying, well, it's not going to last long. You don't have to worry. You'll get over tonight and you'll be okay. I keep thinking, well, maybe tomorrow Hilton will have a picture just like that for us, or later tonight. Maybe. Well, we, we also don't want to be quite as optimistic uh, about uh, going to the Yale UConn game yeah, when we're yeah, talking about right. damage cleanup. We are talking right. in the hundreds of millions of dollars. We are already talking about two storm-related deaths. We do not have full communications around the state as we would on a normal day, so we're not even sure how many other um, deaths have been caused by this. It is, in fact, a killer hurricane. We know that there were people who were left out on Fire Island to the south shore of Long Island, people who had refused to leave, even though they were told it was an unprotected barrier island and there could be very serious problems. Uh, and they, in fact, later had to call into the Coast Guard, ask to be removed, and the Coast Guard said, we gave you your opportunity. We will not endanger our men now to try to come out in the middle of a hurricane to bring you out. Good luck to you. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, told you a bit earlier on today, too, that the Coast Guard had indicated they had had a phony, or what they believe was a phony distress call out on Long Island Sound. And again, as Lucille Caliendo told us, they had pulled their ships back up into safe port, and their men, they were keeping safe. They will be back out as the storm passes by to try to assess the damage. They thought that uh, that distress call was a phony because they thought it was teenage voices and that those voices were laughing and chuckling at the same time. The Coast Guard says this is not a funny situation. Needless to say, they do not appreciate that kind of thing. Before we go to a break, we have a live camera now set up on the roof to show you what's going on in Hartford on top of our building. Right on top of the building at 100 Constitution Plaza, we're looking at 91 and 84. Looking at that picture, though, Pat, it doesn't look, the wind is blowing, but I don't really see a lot of rain in that picture. And we are seeing cars continuing on uh, 91 northbound right there. We can tell you we've had wind gusts here in Hartford of better than 80 miles an hour so far, and uh, that location is not far from the wind instrument that picked up those wind gusts. So we can tell you the uh, storm, the worst of the storm, is not yet over. We are better than halfway through it. We hope at this point landfall was about an hour and 15 minutes ago, and the storm is continuing to move up the western uh, side of Connecticut. Stay with us. We're con uh, continuing Eyewitness News team coverage. Joining us on WDRC Radio 1360. If you are without power right now, stay with us on your transistor radio. And again, uh, we have lucked out in many ways with this storm, as devastating as it is. It has hit at low tide, not high tide, and that means that that 8 to 12 foot increase in the tides is not nearly as damaging as it might have been. We can point out to you back in the hurricane of 38, the storm hit at high tide. We hit at low tide this time, very fortunate. Also, we hit during the daylight hours. Thank goodness for that, because we can at least see the kind of damage that is out there. People can be alert, can be aware, can be at home, and can be safe, and that is very, very important. It's nice to get a little bit of encouraging news, despite all this horrible information we've been bringing you today. We've also found out that that insurance number that we were telling you about is nationwide insurance. Nationwide insurance, so that's for policyholders of nationwide insurance, not all nationwide insurance companies. Back uh, to their homes or to their apartments to, uh, to uh, try to put their lives back together, but the shelters, I'm sure, will stay open as long as needed. Governor, do you expect it to be extensive damage or a light uh, amount of damage? Well, point? from what we can hear in here, and I've been in the building all day, I uh, uh, haven't had the chance to leave this building today, so you kind of get lost in here. All you know is the reports that you get from the outside world. And from what we are hearing, there'll be a lot of damage along the shoreline. How much? Certainly, it's much too uh, similar. To what Governor, about internally? how do you feel? How well do you feel the state was prepared for all of this? I think the state was as well prepared as we as we possibly could have been. I think the news media has done an outstanding job in notifying the people. Uh, every time that I had the opportunity to come before you, uh, I know it was broadcast out there, so the people knew what was going was going on. And the media in general, for the last couple of days, has. Uh, and uh, very, doing very good things, I think, letting the people know that we're in for a good uh, 
severe storm. Do you now feel that the test is now up to the individuals who are now going to have to go out there and, and get the cleanup going on? Well, it's a long way before we're out of the woods with this particular storm, certainly, and cleanup may take, uh, I don't know, days, weeks, who knows, depending on uh, how much we've really got out there. Uh, I know I've got a problem because two trees went through my own garage home in East Hampton. My neighbor called my wife to tell us that. So uh, that's a minor thing, and thankfully uh, nobody was injured in our town. And to my knowledge, very few people around the state of Connecticut. What about damage to the central area, like Hartford in that area? What kind of damage do you think occurred? We, we have not heard of any severe damage, uh, basically anywhere but along the shorelines. There's some flooding up in Tarrington. That's what happened with the sewage plant up there and in Middletown and a few other locales that like that high water. But it's receding. And uh, we didn't get the 8 to 10 inches of rain work that could have happened. Uh, it appears we got 2 to 3 inches in various places. So we've been very lucky. I consider we're very, very lucky. Do you so think as the eye passes over, which it seems to be overhead, it, uh, it's not going to be that bad from now on? All I know is from what uh, I've been told by the weather people, and they believe that the, the storm is now, the worst of it is over. Uh, it's going to have some trailing squalls and still gusty winds. But the basic part of the storm has passed through Connecticut and is now up into Massachusetts. We had a report of a Cheshire. Do you have any word on that? A moped accident? There was a moped accident in Cheshire. Uh, a death did occur. Uh, we have to assume it was storm related because of rain or wet highway, but as far as being directly call, caused by winds from the hurricane, we have no proof of that. Governor, any word on the Coast Guard ship? We have heard no more from the Coast Guard at all and uh, about any boat out in the sound whatsoever. Governor, uh, did you do a completely call of state of emergency? There was some confusion at one point. Well, as, as far as I needed to do, now the next, my next step is to, to take the uh, step as far as getting federal funds, which would be the next application. But, Increasing cases, uh, having had good traffic fatalities, might you call a state of emergency, keeping people off the road sooner than you did in this case? Well, we never kept people off the road. Certainly, uh, the, ca the uh, case of two traffic deaths was totally unrelated to any action that I took here today. I'm not trying to make any correlation, but... Uh, oh, you make me wonder stuff. when you ask that type of a question. Well, a state of emergency ordering people to stay off the road, except for extreme emergencies, yes. uh, that never, it never went to that level here. That's correct. Uh, because we wanted people to be able to, to get to and from home and so forth, from work if need be. But what we did was exactly the right thing to do. Governor, Governor, people obviously are going to be wondering how long it's going to be before uh, their power is turned back on. Considering the number of outages, can anybody there give a ballpark figure as to whether we're talking about a matter of hours, days, or weeks? Okay, Rebecca or whomever, we the spokesperson. Roberta, excuse me. Roberta? <coughs> Roberta Bromberg from Northeast Utilities. Until we get a chance to walk the streets and take a look at the extent of the damage, we really can't give you a reasonable estimate. I would say it's a matter of days at this point. We've had reports from our own line crews that this is the worst damage that they've seen in their careers. So we just ask our people out in the communities to please bear with us and we'll work as fast as we humanly can. Thank you. Could we have UI uh, give us some estimation as well, or do we have a UI uh, there's no representative from UI, but I believe that they are in a, an equally dire situation. They have uh, 175,000 of their customers out, so I think it'll be several days for them as well. There you go, the live coverage of the uh, governor's news conference going on, the briefing over at the state armory, and of course the spokeswoman too from Northeast Utilities indicating that this is the worst damage of downed power lines in Connecticut according to the experienced field technicians that they use, their field crews who do the repair work. And I will remind you all of the ice storm that we had that uh, basically shut down the state for so many days and the power service that was out for several days at that point. If indeed we are talking about a comparable or a more severe situation, we are talking about Monday or Tuesday at the earliest before we could anticipate having full power restored around the state of Connecticut. But the governor has uh, indeed said it appears we are coming out of the woods. As we had indicated earlier, the worst is behind us. We'll be checking in with WeatherWatch 3 in just a couple of moments to give you further um, affirmation of that, if we can put it that way. Uh, the phone lines, Gail, you and I were talking about mm -hmm. uh, the lack of reports we'd have on telephone lines down. The governor made a good point. People normally don't call in and say that their phone line is out during the middle of a hurricane. So that's I guess that's why we haven't had a number on that. And of course, the military department and the state police remain on alert in case of any potential problems in terms of uh, looting possibility or any kind of crowd control that might be necessary a bit later on for some of the communities. The governor inviting the first selectmen and mayors around the state to contact him if they need help. 
I like the governor's point that he made that, yes, the worst is over, but we are not over the woods yet. So while it may seem like it's time to celebrate, yeah, let's go outside, please don't do that, because we still have a long ways to go. Even the spokeswoman from Northeast Utility says that it's going to be a matter of days. She can't even give us an estimate on when they will have all the power restored. So once again, you keep hearing this word all afternoon, patience. We were required. talking about telephone problems. We had a few with Celeste Ford a bit right. earlier on today. We were trying to uh, get to her and be able to speak with her. We now have her back home. And back home, uh, healthy and hearty, I am sure. Uh, you had quite an experience out there today, though, Celeste. And I wonder if you can bring us up to date. Where were you, Celeste? Well, we started off in the old Lyme area, myself and uh, Channel 3 news photographer Art Donahue, and then we moved along the shoreline. And earlier you were saying this is a day that will make history in Connecticut. Well, I know I'll never forget it. It was really something, and you have to have seen a hurricane to believe the force, the sound, the fury. Uh, we started off in Old Lyme, and at that time, it was somewhat deceptive, the strength of this hurricane. It had been raining off and on in the course of the morning. But then about mid-morning, here you see we're in Clinton, and you're just getting an idea of how strong the wind is. It's rocking everything in sight. Here the waves are uh, leaping over onto the shores. It's probably about 10 feet high at this point. We're in Clinton, and I can hardly hold on to the camera. The winds are so strong, it's hard to describe. And here the, the surf's lashing up, and that wind is blowing onto the shore is knocking out, uh, is knocking down trees as if they're a matchstick. It's the only way I can describe it. And as the trees come down, they take the power lines, they take the telephone lines. There you have your power outages and lack of communication, no telephones. Now we're in Westbrook, and this is just as the hurricane is hitting Connecticut's coast. Uh, Art's approaching Westbrook Beach, and the waves are coming up over the car, splashing clear over them. And here you get another view of what a hurricane looks like when it hits the shore. Again, we're in Westbrook. The Westbrook Civil Preparedness Headquarters was in full swing at that time. They, like other local authorities, were trying to coordinate the emergency efforts. Got a little bit of uh, spray on the lens there so we can keep right on shooting. Uh, as I was saying, the local authorities were trying to coordinate the uh, emergency efforts and at this point, they were called in off the roads. It was considered too dangerous to be out and trying to get these pictures. Uh, now, this is a look in Old Saybrook after the hurricane had, the brunt of it pretty much had moved over the shoreline. And this is an idea of the aftermath. You're looking at the flooding. It's probably about two feet deep here. And this whole block, uh, and this is an Old Saybrook, a little peninsula there, is underwater. At this point, uh, we're heading back to the shore because the roads were flooding over, and that means you head out there and you might just get trapped out there. As this was the was case. The area that was evacuated, is it not? It was evacuated. Thousands were evacuated in all the low lying beach areas. Of course, I understand there were some people who were a bit stubborn about leaving. In fact, they didn't leave, although the state police uh, were making rounds in the course of the morning, going door to door, seeing that in fact everyone had left the homes, but they hadn't left their home. They had to list their names and their next of kin. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing to take lightly, and they wanted everybody out of there, but of course they couldn't force them. I talked to some people who insisted on staying, and they Why did like, they say that they want to stay? I, I, I never understand that. Why do they want to stay? One man I was talking to uh, in uh, the Clinton area said that this is his home, he wanted to be here, he didn't know where else he felt like he wanted to go, and also he thought that there might be looting, and he didn't want to leave his property uh, unguarded, although he was perhaps taking his own life at risk. I thought the comment from the first select woman was very interesting when she was trying to get people to evacuate. She said, look, you know, look people, we can protect your property. We cannot protect your property and we cannot protect your life. You've got to leave. Mm -hmm. And it just amazes me though that some people just refuse to take that advice, even though they know that their lives are in danger. That's exactly right. But as far as property goes, people down there were taking precautions as best they could. And all morning long as we drove around, we could see people uh, putting up boards over the window, taping the window, clearing what they could out. They're filling up their cars and mm -hmm. heading towards safer, higher grounds. And in many cases, that ended up being the uh, high schools in many of these communities. Right. Those formed the shelters, and there were a lot of people there um, taking advantage of a safe, dry place with uh, food provided and um, 
emergency medical services there as well. I, I've spent a good number of, of years, uh, of course, in Connecticut and down along the shoreline there, and th those people are pretty well set when it comes to the heavy storms that do come in, because even milder hurricanes, you, you'll find people who will board up down there, and people mm -hmm. who do have shorefront property mm -hmm. are, uh, are those, I think, uh, who perhaps are easier to convince in a storm like this than those of us who live inland who say, what do you mean? Why do I have to board up at my house? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, even though people I talked to said, well, I've seen hurricanes before, they admit it, they hadn't seen anything quite like this. And we're talking about people who survived those hurricanes of 38 and in the 50s, and uh, people were, weren't taking the might of Gloria for granted. Okay, thank you very much, Celeste. Uh, we will look forward to your further report a bit later up tonight on Eyewitness News 530 and 6. We're going to take a break right now. Hilton Catterley is standing by at the Weather Watch. He's got the latest information. They're on the edge of the woods. I want to show you radar. This is an old satellite picture from a couple of days ago, but uh, I want to show you radar because uh, that's what I really want to talk about, to be very honest with you. Uh, this little band of clouds right here pretty well represents, we think, as best we can determine, the old eye of the hurricane that's just expanded to include a good section of New England. Now, I say we're on the edge of the woods and not out of the woods yet because uh, we've been through a, a pretty ferocious storm this morning in midday. But uh, to give you an example of um, how fickle these storms can be as they're falling apart, the strongest winds of the day were recorded between 2 and 3 o'clock in Providence, Rhode Island. Strongest winds reported at 3 at Providence of 81 miles an hour. Boston had 71 mile an hour winds reported at 3 o'clock. Those were wind gusts.